Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Panther Stadium and another year of Panther football. We are live here at Panther Stadium. I'm Jared Lucky along with Maury Stein. Uh, Marcus Fuentes is here with us doing camera duty tonight, and he might come on at halftime and talk a little bit about the game. And uh, we're excited for another season. Kerrville Tyvee coming in here to play Medina Valley. Um, we're on a little later than we want it to be. We had some technical issues. Those are taken care of at the moment. And we are live with a video stream and ready to kick off the season, Maury. Ready to rock and roll. Medina Valley comes in slight underdog to the Tyvee Antlers. And, Jared, the, uh, there's more enthusiasm surrounding this year's team with the new coaching regime than we've seen in a long time. And, you know, looking forward to the season, Jared. I, I, I think the Panthers are headed in the right direction, and I'm looking forward to it very yep. much. So, Head coach um, Andrew Britt is the new head coach here at Medina Valley. He was at Medina Valley the last couple of years. Um, he just wasn't. He wasn't one of the coordinators or the head coach, but he came from a big school in San Antonio where he was an offensive coordinator. I want to say it was like Stevens or Johnson or one of those. And we'll get to know him a little bit better on Sports for Supper next Wednesday night. They weren't able to be there this past Wednesday. But uh, the, you know, the two scrimmages that Medina Valley had, I heard and saw some videos of them that they looked pretty good in those scrimmages, especially against Lockhart, um, a team that's you know ranked very high in – their division there, and uh, Medina Valley getting set to take on Kerrville Tyvee. This is always a good uh, matchup for Medina Valley. You know, they were district foes for many, many years. Last year was the first year uh, they were not a district opponent. We played them up in Kerrville for the opening game of the year um, here at Medina Valley. And uh, Kerr Kerrville getting ready to come out, both teams getting ready to come out onto the field to kick off their season. And Mari. You know, what are what are some of your keys to the game here tonight for Medina Valley? What are you looking for in this opening game? To, I, I think some of the keys to the game, the main key to the game, Jared, is one of the bugaboos last year, and it, and it was all year long, is the pre-snap penalties. You've got to eliminate the pre-snap penalties, and if you can accomplish that, and it, like I say, in the scrimmages, we did do just that. Yep. We limited them. You know, this is the first, you know, live action. So you might have a little bit of a jitters. You have a new center moving over uh, from the guard position to the center position this year. They've switched around a little bit. But I think, it, you know, if you eliminate the pre-snap penalties, I think everything else will fall into place. Well, and if you look at some of their their skill positions, there's players returning that were here last and year that ones. have experience. And there's some new ones. But you've got two quarterbacks a uh, junior and a sophomore now who were sophomore and freshman last year. Um, Michael Newton got injured the second game, second or third game of the season. Uh, Xavier Gonzalez had to step in. He filled that role the rest of the season as a freshman. And I know um, both young men have put on some – some size over the year, over the season, off season, and both of them had looked good in the scrimmage, and they're competing for that starting spot. And it'll be interesting to see if they rotate them in and out, and how Coach Britt utilizes both of those quarterbacks because they're both could probably start somewhere else. Well, and and the thing about it is, is they're not different. It's not one adds one aspect to it that's a better passer. One of them's a better runner. They mirror themselves. So it's not going to say, okay, here's a passing down. You're going to see this quarterback. It's a running play, more or less. They mirror each other, and that's what I like about it. You can't just say, okay, here's third down. Here comes the other quarterback. We kind of know the tendencies. This is totally different. You have A.G. back, Anthony yep. Guerrero. You have Carter Hewitt back. You have your receiving core in Ty Millis and Guyon. And, you know, Jared, they're, they have everything they need to be a very successful team this year. Yeah, you're exactly right, Mari. And we're going to take a break, and uh, it's going to be for the National Anthem. And we will be back with all the play-by-play. -play. You're listening to Panther Football, brought to you this year by North Park Chevrolet and by Dotson House Moving and Construction, two title sponsors this year um, for to bring you Panther Football. And we'll be getting recognition in for all of the sponsors 
this season, and uh, we will return in a moment. It's, it's the, the biggest, biggest sale of the, of the year, year at North Park Chevrolet in Castroville. Get a new Silverado Crew Cab posted at $37,999, or get $5,000 off Equinox or $7,000 off Traverse. 1.9% financing available on new Chevrolets. Plus, get two years of no charge oil changes and one year of unlimited car washes with all new Chevrolets. Find new roads at North Park Chevrolet, 10 minutes outside Loop 410 in Castroville or at npchevy.com. Dotson House Moving and Construction is a fourth generation company operated by the same family for over 75 years. We do turnkey work from moving your structure, setting the foundation, and all your construction needs. Aluminum decking, concrete work, canopies, and any other need to make your project operational. From moving to construction, large or small, Dotson House Moving and Construction does it all. Located at 12939 Southwest Loop 410 in San Antonio. Give us a call at 210-628-1459. Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. Are you ready for a vacation? Tanya with Travel by Design can help you with all your vacation destination needs. At no cost to you, she can plan all of the details tailored to your unique wants and needs. So all you have to do is enjoy your vacation. Tanya is a certified expert with Disney Universal Orlando and California, Sandals, and all cruise lines. Give Tanya a call at 830-931-4834 or visit her Facebook page, Tanya with Travel by Design, for all the latest specials and must-do vacations. There's power in the simplest of actions, like one neighbor helping another, where everybody looks out for everybody else. Community is everything at Medina Electric Cooperative, and we're grateful for your trust to provide the energy you need, giving you the power to power on. Medina Electric Cooperative is a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, your source for power and information. Double T Outfitters offers deer, duck, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in Southwest Texas on over 20,000 low-fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in Southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210-413-1597 or online at DoubleTHunting.com. Chicken, one of the oldest locations in Castroville, is proud to serve the Medina Valley area. Bush's Chicken has one goal, be the best. Bush's Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve. Stop by Bush's Chicken on Tuesday and get the Tinder Tuesday deal or try their buffalo fries and ask about their Panther special. It's always a hit. Bush's Chicken, 935 Highway 90 East in Castroville. Call them at 830-538-2800. Texas, 268,000 square miles and then some. Twice as much helper room as California. There's just no place like Texas. And you can take that to the bank. Texan Bank, poised and ready for a future that's wide open. Member FDIC.
Dotson House Moving and Construction is a fourth generation company operated by the same family for over 75 years. We do turnkey work from moving your structure, setting the foundation, and all your construction needs. Aluminum decking, concrete work, canopies, and any other need to make your project operational. From moving to construction, large or small, Dotson House Moving and Construction does it all. Located at 12 939 Southwest Loop 410 in San Antonio. Give us a call at 210 628 1459. Welcome back here to Panther Stadium. The National Anthem's been played. I'm sorry for that really long commercial break, but we took them because we got on late and I wanted to catch up for the sponsors to make sure we get all these commercial breaks in because there are a lot this year. Um, a lot of new sponsors this year for Medina Valley Football, the community coming out and supporting Panther Athletics. A um, like, little update, I'd like to wish good luck to the cross-country team who is having a meet here at Medina Valley tomorrow. And another, you know, great year here for football, Mari. They painted the field in the center like they used to do. Um, I know they painted it earlier today. Looks good. You can see that um, there in the center of the field. Medina Valley wearing their black uniforms, black shirts, black pants with the white numbers and the orange trim on the side, the black helmets with the orange MV and the number on the opposite side of the helmet. Kerrville Tyvee in their all-white uniforms, white jerseys, white pants, with the blue numbers, blue trim, and the gold helmet with the T on the side. Um, you know, classic uniforms for both of these teams, Mari. Not, not, I know Medina Valley has changed some over the years, but they've gone back to more of the classic, you know, look, the, the black on black. They don't wear the orange anymore, the orange jerseys. Um, the helmets are back to the matte-colored helmets. You know, they're not... Some of those shiny ones, metallic ones we've seen in the past, they went back to the basics, and that's what it's been now for about the last four or five years. Yeah, and I kind of like to look the old-fashioned look. I uh, wanted to uh, just give a shout-out to Juke's Meat Market for furnishing us a food tray, as they are very generously do at every home game. So I want to thank uh, Juke's Meat Market for that once again, for stepping up again this year. The captains for Medina Valley – uh, number 22, Daniel Riza. Number 16, Lorenzo Morales. Number 27, Manny Riojas. And your last captain, who is number 67, that's Jonathan Burns, senior offensive lineman. As they are out there for the coin toss to get this ball game ready to go. Jonathan Burns was the young man who I said switched and moved over to the, the center. center position this year. So. Yeah, and, you know, last year, Mari, we talked about some of the pre-snap problems. Center was a problem, too. He snapped the ball over the quarterback's head numerous times, which huge setbacks. Medina Valley won the toss and deferred. And so the Panthers are going to kick and defend the West goal, and we're ready to go here. Actually, partly cloudy skies. It's very humid tonight. Um, it's been hot. You know, this summer's been one of the hottest ones we've had in a long time. I can't – don't remember many times when it's been under about 104 <laughs> this summer, but it's been up there. And that's that's at 9 o'clock in the evening. No, some, and, some and you it. know, the, the thing is, too, and we're so thankful for the rain that we got, but now it's so humid <laughs> since then it makes it just unbearable to be out there. And they recognize the uh, military and police, firefighters, first responders, all that in the stadium. They do that before every home game here at Medina Valley. They ask them to stand up and, you know, applaud for them. They're the real heroes. Yep. And we are ready to get this season underway. It'll be Kerrville Tyvee and then next week against John Jay and then Medina Valley starts district play Mari you know with the district being as big as it is you only have two non-district games before you get going 
And so this game tonight, next week's a tune-up for district against Jay. And then you're thrown then into it. you're ready. It. Yep. It's ready to roll. So the Panthers will tee it up on the 40-yard line, and we're ready to get this ball game underway. Number 14 will tee it up for the Panthers. That's Gavin Rips. Had the kicking duties last year as well for Medina Valley. Back deep to receive for Tyvee. Looks like number 23, Dominic Vasquez. And we are ready to get this game going as Rips will step it off. Right footed kicker ready to boot it away. And he will kick it, a high end over end kick that will be played at the 20 yard line. Starts up to the 25 30, and he's run out of bounds and tackled and that is where Tyvee will start first down and 10 at the 29 is where they'll spot him. Ruben Rincon on the stop for the Panthers on the special teams. And so we'll see the Medina Valley defense out there first. And I know some of the things in the scrimmage that they talked about was the ability that Medina Valley had to wear them down toward the end of that scrimmage. That's something that Medina Valley has wanted to work on over the past couple of years because it's been Medina Valley, the team that's been wore down at the end of game. So we'll see if they can flip that here tonight. Julian Rhodes out of the shotgun, a high snap, and there's a false start against Kerrville to start things off right away. And so it'll be first down and 15. A couple of the linemen moved a little prematurely before the snap. Aiden Varwig is the running back in there for Tyvee to start things off. Julian Rhodes, the quarterback, a senior. And they're ready to go here out of the shotgun. They'll start it off here with four wide. There you go. Moved Moving. again. They moved again. And so there's two quick false starts against Tyvee, Mari, and it's first down and 20. As Rhodes... Out of the gun here, ready. is loaned back to the right, Varwig. Takes the snap, going to swing it out to Varwig, right side. Makes the catch. He gets back across the 20 to about the 21-yard line. Not a lot doing there. Good lateral movement by Vallejo, the inside linebacker for the Panthers. Picks up four yards. It'll bring up second down at 16. We called Vallejo's name quite a bit last year as a Sophomore on the varsity team. Rhodes in the gun again. He's got three wide out here to the left as they move right to left. Looking to throw. Rhodes under pressure. Rolling out. Now he's going to have to get sacked back at the 19-yard line. It looked like he was going to throw it away. Tucked that ball down and took the sack. And it's going to be third down, about 20. Morales and Vallejo respectively on the sack for the Panthers. Good coverage downfield, Jared. Never yeah. had a receiver open. So it's third down, 20 to go here on the opening drive for Tyvee. They sent three wide way out to the right over there. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Rhodes rolling out to the right side. Going to throw on the run. It's going to be complete, but no gain. He actually lost yards on the play. It looks like back to the 17, 18-yard line. He lost a yard, and it's going to be fourth down. That was Carter Hewitt on the coverage for the Panthers. Great job. Great opening series for the Panther defense. Hewitt and Tessera will go back for the Panthers to receive this punt. That's a good start, Jared. No, they minus one yard. I mean, I know, I know they got in a first and 20 situation, but it's fourth and 21. I believe this is Carter Hewitt back deep to receive for the Panthers. Hewitt, a senior this year. He, uh, Played last year, made some returns. I think that's Landon Burns also No, it's number back. two, Tercero. Tercero, okay. Yes. He's a sophomore wide receiver for the Panthers and a timeout taken by Kerrville. So some confusion on the Tyvee side. And this is something Jared Coach Britt told us what was going to happen this year is 
two men back there in punt formation because he got tired of last year seeing that ball hit the oh hit the ground. We did too. And and, and rolling for extra yes. yardage. Feel the ball in the air, yep. even if you call a fair catch. Do not let it roll past you. No, because that's that's yards. I mean, that's all yards you have to make up in field position. Timeout brought to you by Peerless Equipment Company. Plus, there's a lot of trickerations that can happen when you have two returners down there, especially with the speed that these two young men have for the Panthers. You it and Tercero back deep. Not a great snap, but he gets it away. Left-footed kicker with a good punt that Hewitt will field. And here he comes across field, cuts it up. There's flags down on the play. He's got some speed still on his feet across to the 35-yard line of Tyvee. But there is a flag down, and we'll see. That's usually in the holding on. situation there. And, and it came in very early. It came in before he even caught the ball. Might negate a great return, and it does. Hold against the Panthers. But, you know, a good return. We'll see if they step it off here from the end of the run, and that's what they should do from the end of the return. It's still a great field position for the Panthers. Yeah, they still have it on the plus side of the 50. Ball will be spotted at the 46-yard line of Kerrville Tyvee. It was actually a really good punt. He just kind of outkicked his coverage, and Hewitt was able to make some things happen. Yeah, because it was not a good exchange no. from the center to the punter. No. It was a bad snap. And the Panthers will come out here under center. I believe that's Newton under center for the Panthers out of the pistol. Takes the snap, going to hand it off to Guerrero right up the middle, and he's going to get down to about the 42-yard line, so he picks up four yards on first down. Curtis Woods, the outside linebacker for the Antlers on the stop. Newton out of that pistol. He's not – it's not a true shotgun. He's going to throw right away, and that was almost picked off. There's a flag down way out there. Well, you're going to have a holding on Medina Valley out there or maybe offensive pass interference. It was blocking before the ball got there well, on the, the outside. The thing was – Off sides are going to call. Yeah. Well, and he was right there. I mean, he jumped that route. He read it all the way, but – it looked like he was just right there on top of him before Newton even got the football. And that's going to bring up a second down and one. Wow, that's great. And there was a flag on each side, so both both of them saw it on each side of the field. Yeah, so that'll move him down to the 37-yard line. It's second down, a yard to go for the Panthers. Cade Gallion wide out here to the right. And he's got some size on that cornerback. We'll see if they use that. Got him to jump offside again. They give to Guerrero. He's not going to get the first down, but they're going to get it via the penalty. Yeah, 89 on the stop there, but he jumped into the neutral zone. Jacob Flores. Good discipline there by the Panthers to not, you know, in, in the years past, when the Panthers did any kind of cadence other than the first, they were jumping off. They, they, were, fooled, they, were, they outsmarted they themselves. Yeah, and good discipline there. Nobody moved on that line. So a first down for the Panthers. The ball goes down to the 32-yard line. They'll send a man in motion. Takes a snap. Looking to throw off play action. He's going to fire it over the middle, complete to Hewitt, and he holds on down to about the 16-yard line. It's going to be a first down, a pickup of about 16 yards. Good play over the middle right there, Maury. Absolutely, and good job of holding on to the ball. Number 21, Hernandez on the stop. Well, and Hewitt, you talk about hand catching. He caught that with his hands and held it out there to keep it from getting swiped away from him. They go quickly here. They give to Guerrero on the misdirection, and he gets up the middle across the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It's like they'll spot him at the 13. Jacob Flores on the stop there for the Antlers. Another four-yard pickup there by Guerrero. And that's going to be a big key here, Mari, is if they can open up that middle, that's going to take some of that pressure off of Guerrero. You can make them linebackers drop back into coverage. They'll send Hewitt in motion. Takes that snap, looking to throw. 
Newton under pressure, flows it up to the middle of the end zone. It's picked off in the end zone. There's a flag down at the 10-yard line. Tybee's going to have the ball at the 7 off the interception. We'll see what the flag is I on the ineligible be, downfield yeah. against the Panthers, and that's going to be Kerrville football. And, Jared, that was just an ill-advised no, pass. Yes, he just was. floated that one up to basically whoever was in center field. Well, and, and let's think about this for a second, Mari. Newton, who was a sophomore last year, stepped into the quarterback role because another quarterback got injured. Then he got injured two games in. He's not had any playing experience. If you think about it, I mean, that's he's a junior. That's just a young mistake right there. Threw the ball up as he was getting hit, intercepted. Probably ill-advised for Tyvee to bring it out of the end zone because now they have the ball first and ten at their own seven-yard line. We'll see if that Panther defense can step up here. Rhodes out of the shotgun. He's got three wide. Takes a snap. Going to give the ball off this time right side. Breaks a few tackles, gets across the 10 to about the 12-yard line, 13-yard line. James Vallejo on the stop once again for the Panthers. That was number 33, Varwig on the carry. Picks up seven yards. It's going to bring up second down and three. 7.31 to play, first quarter. Rhodes out of the shotgun again. He's got four wide receivers now. The Panthers shift on that line. They're going to swing it out to Varwig. Makes the catch. He's out to the 16-yard line. Close to a first down. I think he's going to be about a yard shy. It's going to bring up third and one. Zalza Vega on the stop there for the Panthers. Third down, one yard to go here. Rhodes in the gun. Takes that snap. Gives it to Varwig up the middle, and he's going to get the first down as he falls forward to about the 20-yard line. That's where they'll spot him. Picked up three. Once again, that's just good hard running yeah. there. Just manned up body on body on the offense and defensive line, and Tyvee just won that battle there. Panther defense playing with a three-down lineman set. They play that looks like a 3-4. Rhodes looking to throw with some time. Sets up, fires deep down the right side. He's got a man out there, but he overshot him. Falls incomplete. Pass was intended for Stormy Rhodes, number two. Christian Maldonado step for step with Rhodes. I wonder if Julian and Stormy are, are twins. They're both seniors. They might just be cousins. We'll find that out at halftime. So second down, 10 to go. You know, and he had a step on it on the cornerback over there. If if Julian Rhodes throws that a little bit better, he's got a long gain. Out of the gun here again with four wide. They're going to give it to Varwig up the middle, and he is met in the backfield and dropped for a loss of a yard, and it'll bring up third down and 11. That was Morales, and we mentioned his name quite a bit last year already on that defensive side. He's a returning starter out there one of the Panthers, and he made his presence known right there. That was just helmet on helmet. Yeah, it was. So third down, 11 to go, and that's what you want. If you're the Panthers, you want to put them in third and long situations. Three wide out here to the left. Takes that snap, looking to throw. Rhodes, now he's rolling out. With time, sets his feet. Now he gets hit as he throws. Ball's tipped and caught. My goodness, by number seven, Carson Jones. Right place, right time. And it's a first down for the Antlers. Wow. That could have easily went the other direction for yep. an interception. But we're going to have an eligible man downfield. So it comes back. That was a 17-yard pickup and a first down that is negated because of an ineligible receiver downfield. And I don't know if you saw it, but I heard him in the other room kind of hollering, holding penalty. They oh, almost, no, they they almost necktied Morales. Morales, yep. they've held him two or three times around that end there. That tackle's getting getting his arm wrapped around him because he's getting beat, and they're not calling it yet. We'll see if that changes as this game goes on. Five fifth, or 524 to play here in the first quarter. Still no score. It's third down and 16 here for the Antlers. Takes a snap, Rhodes. Looking to throw under pressure. 
Throws one, dumps it off to Varwick, got some room to run, a first down and some more across the 35, breaks the tackle. He's in a foot race with Hewitt, down to the 30, 25. Hewitt has him, his helmet came off and he's tackled. Did his helmet come off? Or yes. That, yes, yeah. it did. But that's going to flip the field, a huge gain down from the 15-yard line down to the 12 of Medina Valley. They had just a perfect call right there, Jared. Flooded the left, right side of the formation, a little bubble screen, and just some missed tackles Yeah, at the point of attack, and that was it. 73-yard pickup. Wow. And it's first down and 10 from the 12. Rhodes from the gun. Looking to throw. Fires over the middle and complete right through the hands of number seven, Carson Jones, and it'll be second down and 10. Connor Crisp coming in from his outside linebacker spot, putting pressure on the quarterback. Connor Crisp is a sophomore out there for the Panthers. Second down and 10. Four fifty to play. First quarter, still no score. Tyvee threatening. Rhodes looking to throw. Right side, complete. Makes the catch, and he gets upfield for about three or four yards. It'll depend on the ball spot. That was Stormy Rhodes on the reception. Like Maldonado on the stop for the Panthers. Pick up a four. It's going to bring up third and six. Rhodes out of the shotgun here. Looking to throw, fires quickly right side. Rhodes again on the reception. He reached for the goal line. He didn't get there. I think he's got enough for the first down. It's going to be close. It's right at the sticks. Going to depend on whether they think he reached far enough to get to the first down marker. Yep. They spot him at the two. Uh, he's going to be. No, they're going to be about a half a foot, half a football short here, and it's going to bring up fourth down. So fourth and inches here. They can still get a first down. As they look to the sideline for the play, 3.56 to play here in the first quarter, and Tyvee's going to take their second timeout. Timeout brought to you by Peerless Equipment. And, Maury, this looked like Medina Valley had this game in control early, and then the interception and the long 73-yard pass play which was just a dump off yeah, and underneath it was third and 16 at the time and a lot of missed tackles yeah. there was about two or three missed tackles um he would have probably had the first down but it still would have been at the 30 35 yard line instead they've got fourth down and one at the two and they're going to go ahead and measure this i think that's why they call timeout i think the coach wanted a measurement but it's going to be short no, they're going to say he got a first down, so a good timeout call. And, and you know, Jared, a, a, a coach shouldn't have to call a timeout when it's that close. They should mark. They should measure that regardless. Yes. I mean, they should have not had to call a timeout to get that measurement. And so it's first down and goal now for the Antlers. Rhodes takes the snap. Under pressure now, rolling out to the right, tries to dump it off, and it's going to fall to incomplete, and it's going to bring up second down and goal. Good pressure that time by the Panther defense. Yeah, Crispin Morales with pressure. Rhodes had nowhere to go. So to throw that ball away. Second and goal. So Tyvee with one timeout left here in the quarter, or in the half, rather. We're still in the first quarter, 3.40 to go. Second down and goal from the two. Takes the snap, gives the ball off up the middle, and that's going to be a touchdown. That's number 23, Dominic Vasquez taking it in the end zone. And Tyvee gets on the board first here with 3.34 to play in the first quarter. And they will... Have number nine, Kate Jones, try to tack on the extra point. No, Jones is going to be the holder. I think that's number 87. It is Wiley Landrum 
Going to try to tack on the extra point. Right foot at kicker. Good snap. The kick is up, and he drills it through. So with 3.34 to play, first quarter, your score, Kerrville Tyvee 7, Medina Valley nothing. We're going to take a quick break and then come back. You're listening to Panther Football, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet and by Dotson House Moving, and we'll continue in just a moment. It's It's the the biggest biggest sale of the year at North Park Chevrolet in Castroville. Get a new Silverado Crew Cab posted at $37,999, or get $5,000 off Equinox or $7,000 off Traverse. 1.9% financing available on new Chevrolets. Plus, get two years of no-charge oil changes and one year of unlimited car washes with all new Chevrolets. Find new roads at North Park Chevrolet. 10 minutes outside Loop 410 in Castroville or at npchevy.com. Welcome back here to Panther Stadium as the Panthers getting ready to receive. And number 82, Pablo Rivera has it teed up for The Antlers, he's also the punter as well, left-footed kicker. Riza and Tessero back deep to receive. And the kick is away, and it is a high end-over-end kick that's going to be fielded at the five-yard line. Riza starting up with it here, and he gets hit and taken down at the 13-yard line. A three-yard return. There was four white jerseys down there, and it yep. looked like none of the Panthers even put a block on those five, on those four. Well, I say three-yard return. It was an eight-yard return. But, uh, yeah, there was there was a lot of white jerseys back there quickly. And we'll see that Panther offense come back out here. Their opening drive ended with an interception. Newton back out there to run the offense. Guerrero is going to be the lone back. Panthers running a pistol, not a full shotgun. You got Newton and then right behind him, Guerrero, as they send a man in motion. Takes that snap, gives to Guerrero up the middle, spins around, gets some yards up to the 20, and he picks up about seven yards there on first down. Nick Landrum on the stop there for the Antlers. It's going to bring up second down and seven. Good run that time by Guerrero. 3.05 to play. Panthers send a man in motion. That's Tessero who's wide out to the right now. Gives to Guerrero up the middle, fighting for yards. And he's going to get one, maybe two on the play. 54 on the stop there for... That's Mikey Nelson. Going to bring up third down and a yard. It's really about a yard and a half. So the Panthers here on third down looking to keep this drive going. Riza in motion. Takes the snap. And they're going to get a false start here against the Panthers. Illegal motion, I believe. Well, it looked like the Cerro went in motion. And then went towards the line before the ball was snapped, and that was the infraction. So you had a manageable third down in less than a yard and a half. Now it's going to go third and six, and it changes the whole dynamics of this third down play. Panthers look to the sideline here for the play call. Four wide out here for the Panthers. Three out to the left. Now they send Reza in motion from left to right. Snap to Newton. He's going to throw. Steps up in the pocket. He's going to try to run it himself. He's got a first down and more to the 30, and he's brought down around the 33-yard line. A good job by Michael Newton that time to step up in the pocket and get the first down. Jacob Flores on the stop, but not before Newton uses his legs and gets a first down for the Panthers. You know, he sensed the pressure that time. He stepped up in the pocket, and it just opened the way, and he made the linebacker miss. First down and 10 here from the 33. Newton going to run the option here. Pitches it out to Hewitt, and he gets up and it. Just did get taken down, number 21 on the stop. Aiden Hernandez, and he might have saved a lot of real estate there for the Antlers. Yeah, because if, if – 
Carter Hewitt gets past him. He's got some room to run. Instead, it's a one-yard pickup, and it's second down and nine. Three wide out left for the Panthers. Ball at the 34. Newton looking to throw. Going to set up a screen, and it was almost picked off. That was in and out of the hands of number six for the Antlers, Wiley Flores. And it'll bring up third and nine. That almost was a pick six. Yes. Yeah, because if he holds on to that, he's gone. There's nobody between him and the end zone. And that's twice that they've jumped those routes. They've, they've known that. They did it on the other side earlier. It ended up being offsides. This time they came very close. Third down, nine to go. Newton wants to throw. Fires over the middle to Guerrero. Trying to make a man miss, and he gets slung down at the 39. Now a flag comes in. That might be a face mask. Or, or got, get him up on the, the horse, horse collar somewhere in there. He was going to be about four yards shy of the first down. But we'll see what the call is. And it is a face mask against Kerrville Tyvee, and that will give the Panthers an automatic first down and 15 more yards after the play. And that was just because of the second effort of Guerrero fighting yep. through that first tackle. Well, that's the thing, too. He wasn't even running past him, so to reach up there and grab him by the face mask, I mean, most of the time when that happens, you reach out to stop someone, your hand just and happens to swipe it. That was the case. He had him under control and just reached up to his head. Ball moves into Tyvee territory at the Tyvee 46-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Panthers. They send Tessero in motion. Going to give it to Guerrero up the middle, and he gets across the 45 down to about the 42-yard line. Anthony Sanchez on the stop. Sanchez along with Flores. A four-yard pickup for Guerrero. It'll bring up second and six. Looking to throw. He's got Hewitt, and he overshot him down the right sideline there. Hewitt with speed to burn. He was covered by number 21, Aiden Hernandez, who it looks like Hewitt can beat down that sideline. That's the first pass that Newton's long pass he's thrown tonight. Led him a little too much. It'll bring up third down and about six. The Hewitt had a step on him. Yeah. Out of that pistol. Hewitt out to the left. Now they send Tessero in motion. And they want it to play action, but they stop it here. You're going to get a false start against the Panthers. That's that pre-snap mistake there for the Panthers. That's going to bring up third down and 11 now for Medina Valley. They overcame it the first time on this drive. We'll see if they can overcome it now. Ball moves back to the 47-yard line. They need to get down to the 36 for a first down. Seven seconds to go here in the first quarter. Seven to nothing, Tyvee leading. Medina Valley on the drive right after Tyvee scored. Takes a snap. This should be a free play. Throws over the middle, and he can't hit Hewitt. Falls incomplete, but you're going to have a offside against the Antlers with three seconds to play. So that'll get the five yards back, and it's going to be back to third down and six. So we've seen some sloppy play early. This is the first game of the first season. First game. It's expected. A lot of yellow yep, so and we, far. And we've seen it. Out of the pistol here. Third down, six to go for the Panthers. Reza in motion. Takes that snap. Play action. Rolling out Newton under pressure, and he's sacked back at the 50-yard line. That was just a blown assignment up front because they just let number 34 go straight to the quarterback untouched, and that was too easy. Yeah, and that is going to end the first quarter of play. So your score after one 
Kerrville Tivy 7, Medina Valley 0. We will take a break and then come back. You're listening to Panther football, and we will continue here at in just a moment. Panther Nation, do you have dirty windows on your home? At Texas Window Washing, we offer competitive pricing without sacrificing quality of service for residential and business windows. Turn your dusty and dirty windows into clear shining glass by calling Texas Window Washing today. We also clean solar panels. Find us on Facebook and next door. Go Panthers and God bless America. Call us at 210-326-0800. Five two. That's Texas Window Wash today. And as we get ready to start the second quarter, as I mentioned, we got some new sponsors this year. Um, and that, that was that's one, one of, them. of them. Yep. So uh, second quarter sponsor. He was for a graduate from Medina Valley. Was the kicker for the Panthers when he was a senior, the young man. And we will flip sides of the field right now. Panthers will be punting it away. It looks like that's number 84 for the Panthers. That's Brennan Butler who's going to punt it away. A good snap. Gets the punt off. A high kick that's going to be fair caught at the 19. Actually, they'll make it the 25-yard line is where he will make that catch and that's where they'll start first down and 10. Not a great punt but not a bad one either. No return. No return. That's Kansas. Point of no return. Yeah. Sun breaking through the low clouds for just a little bit. And we're ready to go here as Rhodes out of the shotgun. Three wide out to the left. They're going to hand the ball off to Varwig, and he's got some room to run across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Picks up seven yards, and it's going to bring up second down and three. Got number 44 on the stop there for the Panthers. Xavier Fears. Second down and three to go here. Rhodes from the gun again. Takes that snap, gives it off Varwig, and he's met in the backfield and dropped. There is a flag down right where they tackled him. No gain on the play, but we'll see what the call is here, if it's a hold or if it's on the defense. It's either a hold or it's face mask, I would imagine. It is a hold against Tyvee. Now they're, they don't really have an answer for number 16 when he really wants to get after it back there. They held number 16, Morales, once again. So that'll move him back 10 yards. It'll bring up second down and 13 now. Varwig, the lone back to the right. Two wide on each side. Rhodes to throw. Fires over the middle, complete. And taken down right away at the 27-yard line. That was number seven, Allen. No, it's Carson Jones on the reception. Dylan Allen for the Panthers on the stop. So it's third down and eight to go. It's what you want if you're the Panthers. Third and long here. See if they can get that Tyvee offense on the field and Get their offense back. Rhodes to throw. Swings it out to Varwick. Right side. He's up to the 30, and he's going to get taken down there out of bounds. He's going to be five yards shy of the first down. Good stand by the Panthers. It'll be fourth down for Tyvee. That was Jacob Warren on the stop there for Medina Valley. And Tyvee will send on their punting unit. Number 82, Pablo Rivera coming on to punt. Had one already. We'll see if Hewitt can get a decent return again this time. 
Last time he had a good one, but it was there was a holding call mixed into it. Hewitt, the only man back deep for the Panthers. I think the Panthers are going to make sure that they punt this one. And it snapped past him. And it's going to roll. Oh, they blew they, the play dead. Why? I think they had a false start. Yep, false start against okay. Tyvee. I didn't see a flag. That's why I was asking. No, I, they didn't throw one. They just ran in and whistled the play oh, did, dead. Okay. I saw the Panthers trying to shuffle some people up front. So that'll move it back to the 24-yard line. Punter standing at the 10. Hewitt standing back around his own 42-yard line. It was a low snap again. He just gets it off. It's a good booming kick that Hewitt will feel. He fumbled it, and he's got to get on it. Tyvee's going to recover it at the 30-yard line. Number 45, Gavin Garcia jumped on that loose pickskin. Hewitt kind of played peekaboo, saw somebody coming up in his face and took his eye off of it. And another costly turnover for the Panthers. Yeah, and the thing is, he reached out his hand. If he doesn't touch that, it's just down. But instead, he touched the football, so it's a muffed punt. And Kerrville recovers the fumble, and they're going to have it first and 10 at the Panther 32-yard line. You know, in the first and they time. they take a timeout. Well, in the first time, Jared, we saw two people back there in punt coverage. If you had two back there, you would have had one supporting trying to help with that first block, but still. You know, you got to you got to back away from that one if if you cannot feel it cleanly. You, you cannot, you know. But early in the season, and this timeout is sponsored by Peerless Equipment, Jared. Yes. Thank you for all the sponsors once again this year. Because without y'all, this broadcast would not be possible. So it'll be first down and 10 from the Panther 32. They're going to hand it off to Varwick, trying to go on the left side of the line, and he's going to get no gain on the play. Good job by that Panther defensive front. And Jared, that looked like uh, Jackson Kincaid was in there at quarterback this time for the Antlers. Yeah, and he is. Is that the first and time he's been back there? It, it is, and we saw him last season back there. We saw Rhodes and himself switch in and out in that game. Now they bring in Dominic Vasquez as the lone back. Kincaid takes the snap. He's going to throw off play action, rolling out, fires, complete out to the 30, made the first man miss, and then he's taken down. But another five yards after the – Missed tackle, gets to the 35, and it's going to bring up third down and three. Yeah, Morales finally on the stop, but the Panthers had help out there, and Maldonado just could not bring down on the initial contact. Kincaid in the shotgun now. Vasquez to his left, third down, three to go. Going to hand the ball off. Now he's going to throw it, pulls it out, complete first down and a little bit more. Taken down around the 10. There's a flag that comes in over here on the near sideline. As you had a couple of players, a Panther and a Tyvee player, both tangled up right there on the sideline. We'll, we'll see what they call this on. It's not a dead ball. It was during the play. No signal yet. Personal foul against Tyvee. Well, that'll bring back the first down. It's going to make it third and long. So they'll mark 15 yards off from the end of the play. So it's going to make it. I think he called dead ball here, Jared. I think, I think they're going to get a first down. Yeah, they are. They're going to get a first down, and then they're going to mark the 15 off after that. But. Th he threw the flag before the play I, ended. I thought so, too. It's first and ten nonetheless. The ball's at the 24-yard line. And now they're talking it over some more on this because I think Coach Britt is asking some questions here about what just happened. Well, 
the play was still going on when the flag was thrown. Yes, it was. So, I think Coach Britt is saying it should be the third down and a, a short four long three. That's what they had originally moved it. But we'll see. Long deliberation here. And now the Tyvee coach is getting aggravated over there on the far sideline coming out saying, what's the holdup, what's going on here? And he wants an explanation from the referee. Well, it's going to go back to third and the fourth. Yeah, and that's what they have. So they're going to make it third down and three. So it was before the play ended. It wasn't a dead ball. So we're back to third and three ball at the 24-yard line. Kincaid out of the shotgun takes that snap. Going to give the ball off to Vasquez up the middle, and he's not going to get the first down. It's going to be forked down in about a yard and a half. But And now there's a oh, no. flag coming in here. They're going to get Viegas. Who stopped was on the stop, and I think he had some words when he got off and, the tackle. And he's going to tell Coach Britt exactly what he said or what happened. And it is unsportsmanlike conduct against the Panthers, so that's going to give him a first down. And the yardage. So first and 10 from the 12 for Tyvee. Kincaid in the shotgun. They have three wide out left. He's rolling out that direction, looking to throw. Fires against his body. Complete touchdown. That was number nine on the reception. Kay Jones over there on the far sideline who made a good catch. Got his foot down just inside the pylon, and it's 13-0 Kerrville. Yep, I knew exactly where he had to get down the field. 9.03 to play here in the second quarter. Landrum to tack on the extra point. Jones the holder. Kick is up and it is good. So with 9.03 to play in the first half, your new score, Kerrville Tyvee, 14, Medina Valley nothing. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we will continue in just a moment. Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. We're back here at Panther Stadium as Tyvee ready to boot it away. That's going to be Pablo Rivera with it teed up for the Antlers. Kicking from left to right. And for the Panthers, it's going to be Reza and Tassero back deep to receive. We'll see that Panther offense can get going. They've had some things going, but then they've sputtered and had some false starts, some Pre-snap penalties that have set them back, and that kick is away. A high end-over-end -end kick. It's going to be fielded by Tessero at the 5, looking for some running room. Spins around up to the 10, 11-yard line. He's brought down. Somebody's not doing much blocking. No, there's a, there's a lot of white back there. And the Panthers are minus 2 in the turnover differential right now. And 
Tyvee scored on both, both possessions after the turnover. Yes. 8.55 to play. And we'll see if the Panthers can take this drive downfield and do some damage. Newton will come back out here with Guerrero right behind him. Hewitt wide out to the right. They'll send a man in motion. Takes a snap. Gives it to Guerrero over the left side of the line. He pushes his way across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Picks up about four. Willie Floor is on the stop there for the Antlers. Second down, six to go. Going to swing it out right side to Hewitt. Makes the catch. Made a man miss, and he's off to the races here, and he gets dragged down just from behind. Shoestring tackle that time up around the 35-yard line. We'll see where they spot him. Curtis Woods on the stop there for Tyvee. Got a 20-yard, 20 21-yard pickup there for the Panthers. As they'll spot him at the 39-yard line. No, 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 no. They're going to move him back. Uh, they're going to say, I think they're saying he stepped out of bounds back at the 33-yard line. And that's where they'll spot him. So the play ended about 10 yards farther downfield. Takes that snap, same play. Hits Hewitt out to the right side. Made a man miss, dancing around. He's going to get a yard, maybe two at most. They went back to that exact same play. Yeah, 22 on the stop there, River Reisinger. He got two yards on the play. It's going to be second down and eight. So they get it to the 35-yard line. Four wide receivers again here for the Panthers. They send a man in motion. Gives to Guerrero. Nope, they pitch it. Hewitt, I think he was going to throw, and they had that play blanketed from the start. Guerrero was blanketed. Hewitt was blanketed. It was an option play. They end up losing four yards, and it's going to bring up. They lose more than that. They lost about six. It's going to bring up third and 12. There was Reisinger once again on the stop there for Tyvee. Yeah, third down and 12 from the 31-yard line. And I think, I think Hewitt was going to throw that after he pitched it because of the way he caught it and looked like Look, he was going to yeah, try it, to throw it. But he had three white jerseys right there in his face. So the Panthers will take a timeout with 6.59 left. First timeout taken by Medina Valley, brought to you by Peerless Equipment Company. And the Panthers, this is a – Big drive for them, Mari, down 14 to nothing. You're almost about halfway through the second quarter. And the offense has had some – they've had some decent plays at times, but they haven't been able to sustain anything and get anything going. Their opening drive, they moved the ball. They had great field position and ended with an interception in the end zone. Tyvee would then score. The Panthers couldn't move the ball. A fumbled punt gave Tyvee excellent field position. They went down and scored. So you've, the Panthers need to sustain a drive here, show that they can move the ball. I think they've only made two first downs since that opening drive. One of them was on the scramble by Newton, and then the other one was just we just saw right here on the pass to Carter Hewitt. So it's kind of been a little sparse in between since that first possession. It, you know, and, it, and it looks so promising to yep. start the ball game, and that it's like that one turnover just kind of – Deflated them. Uh, the momentum has just totally turned to – uh, the side of the Tyvee Antlers. Newton in the pistol here. Three wide receivers here. It's third down and 12. Panthers send a man in motion from right to left. Takes a snap, play action, looking to throw under pressure. Newton steps up, fires on the run. He overthrows everybody. No one in the vicinity that time. It's going to bring up fourth down. And the Panthers are going to have to punt. 
Yeah, he just didn't see anybody open downfield, well, and he just threw that one away. Well, Hewitt had kind of sat down on his route, and I think that Newton thought he was going to keep on going. He aired it out down there, and Hewitt picked up the route late. This is Brendan Butler to boot it away. And he gets the kick off. It's a line drive end over end kick that's muffed but falling back on top of by number 25, Guy Flores. He played it kind of like a shortstop would play a ground ball. He took it in the chest, knocked it down, just fell on top of it. Got and a he, fortunate bounce. He, he got a fortunate bounce, but also if he doesn't stop that, that ball rolls another 20, 20 yards downfield. Instead, they have it first down and 10 at the 41-yard line, their own 41-yard line. And that Panther defense that's been out on the field a long time now in this first half. Is out they, there again. Yeah, and they need to step up here and get a stop. You don't want to go down three scores here. You'd like to get this football back and try to put up your own score before halftime and cut this lead in half. It's Kincaid back out there at quarterback. He takes that snap. Going to hand the ball off to Vasquez, and he gets tackled right away. Lost a yard on the play back at the 40. It's second down and 11. That was Gibson Conrad on the stop there for the Panthers. And it's unfortunate for the Panthers because they've gotten Kerrville into some third and long situations and they managed to overcome them, whether it's penalties or just a big play, a, four, a lucky play. Kincaid to throw, fires left side, balls in the air, and it's picked off by the Panthers, number 17, and he's going to try to return it back to the 40, taken down from behind around the 35-yard line. Number 17, Caleb Viegas with the interception. A huge play for the Panthers. They need it that badly, and it's first and 10, Medina Valley in Kerrville territory. Good job there on the deflection by Viegas. So the Panthers get a turnover back this time. Viegas making something happen here. It's going to be first and 10 for the Panthers at the 36-yard lines where they'll spot the football. And it looks like we're going to get a new quarterback for the Panthers. I think that's going to be Xavier Gonzalez. It is the sophomore quarterback. Came up as a freshman last year to take over when Newton got injured. So he's he's experienced. He's not just getting thrown into the fire here. Out of the pistol here. Takes the snap. Pitches it Guerrero. Left side with a head of steam. Puts his shoulder down. He's going to pick up about six yards on the play. Gets down to the 32 Four-yard gain, Gavin, second down and six. Gavin Garcia on the stop there for Tyvee. Down to the 32, four-yard pickup, 5.58 to go here in the first half. Panthers still with two timeouts remaining. They send Reza in motion from left to right. Gonzalez, snap goes up in his head, and it's picked up by Tyvee, and he's gone. They're not going to catch him. That should be a block in the back. And, and they're going to get yeah. him. And they that got was, him. That was their bonehead. No reason for them to block Guerrero in the back. The nope. young man was 10 yards in front of it and would have and did walk it in. This is going to negate yep. a touchdown. Yeah, that was Nick Landrum who picked the football up and went the distance for the touchdown. But unfortunately for them, you got a block in the back, and he just pushed him to the ground right here in front of everybody. Back at the 40-yard line. Wow. And unfortunately, you turn the ball back over. The fortunate thing is the points are off the board and the defense can try to make a stop here. But you just got the turnover back. We talked about that last year, the snaps, and that one, that wasn't even a bad snap. No, it it, it kind of hit him. I don't know if he was looking somewhere else, but it hit him right in the hands and went straight up in the air. But to get so back to that play, that you, there's no reason to even touch no, not at all. Guerrero on that play. And they mark it off from the 40, so the ball will be placed at the 50-yard line right at midfield. And it looks like Rhodes back in there at quarterback. Rhodes takes the snap, rolling left side under pressure, fires. Picked off, number five for the Panthers. Brody Rips coming up with the interception. 
He dove for that, Mari. Lay, almost laid out, just reached his hands out, made the interception, and they get the turnover right back. Well, and Rips was sitting wow. back there where he needed to be, and you got to credit number 16 for the pressure putting on yes. the quarterback. Yeah, as Morales did. was bearing down on Rhodes, made him maybe throw that prematurely, but great job by Brody Rips. That could be the spark yeah, that no, the Panthers needed Panthers right here. Panthers needed that badly, and – you're going to see Xavier Gonzalez come back out here at quarterback for the Panthers. You know, and you got to remember, that was his first series of the game. He might have had a little jitters. We'll see if he can settle down here now. First and 10 from the 46. Gonzalez to throw. Fires deep. He's got Hewitt, and he just overshot him. If he hits him, that's probably six. I don't know if it's probably. I think it is six. No, but but I don't think they're going to catch him. No, but he's got to put a little more air under that. Wow. I mean, he threw a good pass. He just overshot him. I think if he puts a little more air under it, he might hit him. That is twice yep. Hewitt has had steps Yep. But remember behind. that. He's got steps. If they could start finding him, yep. they've got a big play capability there. It's going to bring up second down and 10. Like the Panthers are going to time out for Medina Valley. No? Well, it looked like it. No, they reset they, the. They reset they it. They reset it, yeah. Well, everyone's coming off to the sideline. Had me fooled. Even the Tyvee players were going to theirs. So, second down and 10 here. 5 12 to go. It's been a turnover fest the last two minutes of this game. They give it to Guerrero, who goes nowhere, gets a yard on the play. Had some extracurricular going on long after the play. They let that go. Well, Jacob Flores on the stop there for Tyvee. Lost his helmet, so he's got to go out for a play. It's going to bring up third down and nine. Been tough sledding for Guerrero yes. back there. He hadn't been able to find any, any room. The Panthers well, and up front aren't, aren't opening too big of holes for him so far. Well, no, and they haven't completed enough passes to open up that run game yet. They're kind of daring Medina Valley to beat him with the pass. Gonzalez to throw. Steps up. Looking. Buying some time. Throws. Picked off. Underneath number four. And he's on the return here to the 45. 40. Has a man to beat. And he gets taken down around the 30-yard line. So another interception. This one thrown by Gonzalez. That's four turnovers now for the Panthers in the ball game. Hayden Two nice. for Tyvee. Number four on the interception for the antlers well that was the case he was trying to recover on the play the ball was thrown a little bit underneath and he reached up and made the interception so the defense is asked once again to go out there and try to shut down the antlers here before half So Kincaid back out there at quarterback now. Takes the snap. Gives the ball up to Vargas up the middle. and He's got a lot of room to run, and he's gone. Touchdown, virtually untouched to the end zone. Takes it 31 yards, and it's 20 to nothing. Kerrville with 440 to play. Hmm. Just saw a lot of people trying to arm tackle instead yes. of Making a hit on no, the running back. I don't think he ever got touched. Landrum to tack on the extra point. And a false start here against Tyvee. They had some movement up front on the line. That is the signal. And so they'll redo it. The holder will be at the 15-yard line. It's a 25-yard attempt, and no problem there for Lundrum as he drills it through to make it 21 to nothing. Still have 440 here. Panthers can score here. They get the ball. 
to start the second half, but it is imperative that the Panthers get something, get something going. positive here carrying into halftime. Because it sure looked like the Panthers had gathered momentum after the Rips interception. But then a turnover interception by Nice for Tyvius flipped this ball game again in favor of the Antlers. Tercero and Hewitt, or Tercero and Riza back deep to receive. Rivera ready to boot it away. The big thing here for the Panthers is get that offense going. The, right. the defense has been on the field well, way too long. But, Jared, you need to set up yourself in better field position yes. on, after these kickoffs. You can't start on your 15-yard no, line. No, and that's what they're doing. There's a lot of white shirts down there quickly, and there's a booming kick. They're going to – There you go. He, at least you get it on the 25. Yeah, he made a fair catch at the 7-yard line. I mean, at least now they move it up to the 25-yard line. 4.38 to play in the first half. 21 to nothing. Kerrville Tyvee, your score. Opening game of the season. Hasn't gone the way the Panthers would have liked so far, but there's still a lot of game left here. First five minutes of the ball game. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but then since then, there's been six turnovers yep. in this ball game. Four by Medina Valley, two by Kerrville. And they've scored three touchdowns After off of turnovers. turnovers. I believe this is Newton back out there at quarterback. Takes that snap, going to pitch it to Guerrero, and they're going to blow the play dead. And it is a false start against the Panthers. So first down and 15. Medina Valley back to the line here. One, two wide receivers, one on each side. Now they send a man in motion. They give it to Guerrero, makes a cut back, gets across the 25, and he's taken down at the 27-yard line. Floor is on the stop there for Tyvee. Picked up seven yards. It's going to bring up second down and eight. Four twelve to play. Medina Valley still with two timeouts. Newton will send a man in motion. Reza takes the snap, gives it. Guerrero again fighting for yardage. Gets up to the 30. Looks like they'll give him the 31-yard line. Flores once again on the stop there. And that's going to bring up third down and four. Three thirty to play. The Panthers need to convert this. Need to pick up a first down. Keep this drive going. Not give them the ball back with a chance to score again. Takes a snap. Rolling out. Going to throw on the run. Complete. He's got some room to run. Up to the 40, 45. Midfield. 45, 40. And he's pushed out of bounds. Out. Down across the 40 to the 39 is where they're going to spot it. I'm surprised that that wasn't a flag thrown after that because it looked like they hit Guerrero out of bounds, but no and, flag. And Tyvee forgot all about Guerrero on that play, and Newton did a good job rolling out. They had two guys in his face. He managed to find Guerrero, who gets downfield, flips the field, and it's first and 10 Medina Valley from the Tyvee 39-yard line. That was a well-needed first yes. down there for the Panthers. One wide out here to the left. Man in motion. Gives to Guerrero, who falls forward for no gain on the play. It'll bring up second and ten. 34 on the stop there. Nick Landrum. Two fifty to play here in the first half. Medina Valley looking to get on the scoreboard for the first time this evening. Takes a snap. Going to fire it out right side, and he hit 
He led him too much. He, Hewitt just turned for the ball, and the ball went forward. I think it actually hit the Kerrville defender and falls incomplete. Well, I actually think what happened is the defender knocked the blocker back into, back the ball. into him, and, and Hewitt could not get to the ball. Third down and ten. They've had success with that play earlier in the ball game. And Hewitt, with a lot of speed, you want to get him the ball. Looking to throw Newton over the middle. Oh, oh my. No, the ball, the play was blown dead. Okay. But that just means that's a false start on Medina Valley. And that is what they signal. So it's going to bring up third and 15. Back to the 44-yard line. 2.38 to play here in the first half. Yeah, because if that play keeps going, that was might have been an interception. Newton out of the gun, takes a snap. Looking to throw, makes a man face miss. Mask. That's going to be a face mask, and they're going to get an automatic first down wow. after this. Very fortunate because he was under pressure and wasn't going to be able to get rid of the football. And that's just one of those where number 34 had all the pressure on Landrum. And Newton ducked, and he just tried to reach back and inadvertently grabbed it. But I like that change where no matter what it, what it is, it's still a personal foul regardless. Yeah, it used to be if you got your hand on it and got it off, it was just a five-yard face mask. And then it was under the discretion of the, umpire, of the officials. Did he try to? Did he not? Now it doesn't matter. You touch it, it's a penalty, 15 yards regardless. And this will move the ball to the 29-yard line. It'll be an automatic first down for the Panthers with 2.32 to play. First down and 10. Three wide, four wide out here for the Panthers. They're going to give it to Guerrero, who is covered up immediately, gets back to the line of scrimmage for no gain. Well, he had no chance there. 89 just blew that play up again, Jacob Flores. Mm -hmm. It's every time, and they're running. It's right when he runs up the middle. When they've tried to get him to the outside, they've had some success, but that play right up the middle right there is not – Gotten a lot for Guerrero tonight. Second and 10. Newton looking to throw. Under pressure again. Rolling out. Throws on the run. Almost made the catch. It falls incomplete. That pass was intended for, I think, Galleon over there on the far sideline. Got his jersey kind of tucked up, but I can't tell. Well, I can't I get my It's going to be third down and 10 nonetheless. I think yeah, that's that was 88. 88. That's Cade Galleon. Cade Galleon, yes. Minute 59 to play. Third and 10 again. And you and Tyvee. Four down territory, I would think. Yeah, Jared. you do. But Tyvee's starting to get more pressure onto the quarterback here. They've, they've been able to get some here and there. They're starting to get it on every play. Newton to throw, and the flag comes in. False start against the Panthers again. That's. What the umpire was signaling, yep. Referee says false start against Medina Valley, and it's going to be third and 15 again. You, you know, Jared, is it in that, them penalties right there, is that the cause and effect of them getting the pressure on the quarterback that the, the line is trying to move to block before they even center the ball, that they're, they're feeling under duress? I mean, I, I don't know what, how else to explain it. Third down and 15. They send a man in motion left to right. Takes the Did snap it again. Yeah, they did it again. See, they're taking their step back to get in that pass protection blocking and just moving too quick instead of staying set. Now it's going to be third and 20, and the ball's going to come back to the 39-yard line. And it doesn't matter how good your offense is. It's hard to overcome a third and 20. Yep. Four and wide this receivers, was three wide out here to the left for the Panthers. Hewitt by himself out, right, out to the right. Newton takes the snap. Looking to throw. Steps up. He's going to let it fly. Left side. He's got two receivers there, and they can't get back to the ball. 
They wanted a pass interference call, and they're not going to get it. The pass was intended for number 82, Martin De Los Santos, who was looking for the flag. It falls incomplete. It'll be fourth down and 20. Well, now you got to punt it. There's no, you cannot go for it on third and 20. But, Jared, if you remember, you asked me at the beginning of the broadcast, keys to the game. What did I say the Panthers needed to not do? Pre-snap penalties. And what have they done? Lots of them. Uh, lots of them. And taking you out of good down and distance. Yeah, from first and 10 on the 29 to fourth and 20 at the 39. Butler. Delay a game. Punt and a delay a game against the Panthers. Well, and that might have that, yeah, that been on yeah, purpose to give, to give him a little bit of extra room. Absolutely. Back there. Butler's punt is away, and it's going to be fielded by number 25 at the 23-yard line, and he's going to be taken down right away. Number 23, Dominic Vasquez, or actually it was 25, Guy Flores, who fielded the punt, and it'll be first and 10 from the 23 with a minute 36 left. Tyvee has used three timeouts already. Panthers, I believe, have used two. two. They have one They've only used one, I believe. Have they? Okay. Yeah, they were going to – remember we thought they were going to use That's a second right. and then it was a – They reset the – They reset the clock. clock. Play clock. And so first and ten for Tyvee. It's Rhodes back out there at quarterback. We'll see what they want to do here. If they just want to run the ball and take this into halftime or if they try to get downfield and score here before the end of the half. Rhodes going to hand the ball off, and that's going to be a tackle in the backfield for a loss. Back to the 20. Looks like he lost about four on the play. That was Morales on the stop for the Panthers. As that was Vasquez on the carry, and it's going to bring up second down and 14. Well, now the thing is if the Panthers get a stop and have it in third and long, you can take your timeouts try to get the ball back. But we'll see if that's – if they try to do that at all, they have to get a stop here on this play first. One minute to go. Play clock at 10. Rhodes takes the snap. Looks to throw. Fires it out to the right side. Reception made at the 20. And he's going to be pushed to the sideline. Trying to see if he got out of bounds. They do not stop the clock. Panthers not taking their timeouts. Dylan Allen riding him to only, the sidelines. Yeah, and he only picked up two yards. It's third down and 13, but the Panthers aren't even going to try to get the ball back here. Now they stop the clock. He motioned timeout Kerrville, but I would not know why they would call a timeout in this situation. That makes no sense at all. Well, they don't have any left. Yeah, we got a yeah, panther, we got a panther down. down. But I swear, like Marcus said, running the camera, I swear the official motion timeout, Medina uh, timeout Tyvee, but they don't have a timeout left. No, and they did now he's saying timeout. mine. Yeah, okay. and it's for the injured player. Okay. And, you know, injury to a panther player. We're going to take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther football, and we will continue here in just a moment. Peerless, Peerless Equipment, equipment your, your South, South Texas, Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. Back here at Medina Valley. Injured player got up, walked off under his own power. Hopefully that young man will be all right. And now they wind the clock with 23 seconds left. 
They will not have to stop snap it if they don't want to. And I would not. No, there's about a now, half second. Now the difference. Panthers just made contact and moved and jumped across the line. And it is offside against the Panthers. What? I, I don't know. I don't even understand <laughs> that penalty. He just like I got out of his stance. Like, I mean, I understand why they called it. I don't understand why you'd even be in that situation. And Tyvee looks more than content to just let this clock run out, and they will. And that is going to end the first half of play. Your score at halftime, Kerrville Tyvee 21. Medina Valley will take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther football, and we'll continue in a moment. Are you ready for a vacation? Tanya with Travel by Design can help you with all your vacation destination needs. At no cost to you, she can plan all of the details tailored to your unique wants and needs. So all you have to do is enjoy your vacation. Tanya is a certified expert with Disney Universal Orlando and California, Sandals, and all cruise lines. Give Tanya a call at 830-931-4834 or visit her Facebook page, Tanya with Travel by Design, for all the latest specials and must-do vacations. Not everyone starts their day at the same time or in the same way. But no matter when or how, your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative is there to help you power every moment of it in countless ways. Because whenever it starts, one thing is certain we never stop. Medina Electric Cooperative is a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, your source for power and information. Double T Outfitters offers deer, dove, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in Southwest Texas on over 20,000 low fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in Southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210-413-1597 or online at DoubleTHunting.com. The Medina Valley Sports Boosters are proud to support the Medina Valley Panthers. The Boosters are always looking for volunteers and new members. The MVP Boosters raise funds to support the MVISD sports and scholarship programs. Get your Panther swag at the football store located next to the concession stand. We have several items on sale. Join, volunteer, or purchase your Panther swag today at MVPBoosters.com. Bame Ranch is Castroville's newest gated community overlooking the beautiful Alsatian Golf Course. Bame Ranch sits on pristine South Texas ranch land with 46 remaining one acre home sites dedicated to custom built homes with several move in ready. Don't wait for the market to change. Start building your dream home and watch as supply and demand shift in your favor. You'll be glad you did. Go to bravocountryhomes.com for more info or give us a call today to schedule a tour. Welcome back here to Panther Stadium. We're at halftime where the Panthers trail Kerrville Tyvee 21 to nothing. I know that we've had around 22 penalties in that first half. Combined between the two, two teams, it was a, a sloppy first half nonetheless. When it comes to that, the Panthers turned the ball over four times. Kerrville turned it over twice. But Kerrville scored three times off of those turnovers. It's 21 to nothing as a result. And the Panther offense, when they did move the ball, they had those setbacks with those penalties, you know, pre-snap penalties. They had first and 10 at the 29-yard line, end up with fourth and 20 at the 39. Two false start penalties in there on third down, weren't able to get anything going. And, you know, as a, as a team that's – hasn't had a history of being a big a big strike, big play team. They want to sustain drives. When you sustain drives like that and you're picking up four, five, six yards of play, 
those penalties are very hard to overcome. Now, Medina Valley's got some quick players. They have the ability to hit some bigger plays, as we saw in that first half, but they have not been able to sustain anything, and that's something that's going to have to change in the second half if the Panthers want to still win this game because they're not out of it by any means. No, but, but uh, I think we got another sponsor we need to read here for halftime. They're the halftime sponsor for this year. And it's Magnolia Filling Station. The Magnolia Filling Station features daily dark roast and Friella, Fiorella blend, medium roast drip coffee, lattes, ice lattes, cold brews, chai lattes, mochas, teas, and lemonade are served daily. We make all of our pastries daily from scratch. We also serve cookies, muffins, cupcakes, banana nut bread as well. Come by during lunchtime for a variety of sandwiches including ham, turkey, Italian, and pimento cheese. We also have protein snack packs and yogurt parfaits. Come sit outside under the patio next to one of our historic gas pumps or inside and visit with family, friends, and a friendly barista located in the heart of Casterville at 1101 Fiorella Street. Fiorella Street. That's Magnolia Filling, Filling Station, Casterville, Texas. like to thank Magnolia for becoming a sponsor here this year and sponsoring the halftime. As always, we welcome new sponsors. We have a lot of them this year, and uh, they're just one of the new ones. And uh, the Kerrville Band's playing now. We're going to turn the microphone on when the Medina Valley Band comes out onto the field so you can listen to that. But it is, you know. And it is a crowd mic, yeah. so we're not responsible if yeah, somebody you, gets next to the mic and hears something. Yeah, you don't know what's going to be said out there, and it is a crowd mic. It has to be out of the press box, and, you know, that's not us making the, making those comments if you hear anything. But that, we want to acknowledge the band exactly. also, and that's why we're yep. going to let y'all listen and, and watch the band after Tyvee finishes their routine. But, Jared, we said in the pregame, one of the keys, and I had mentioned the pre-snap penalties, it started off okay, but as the half – Wore down and the and Tyvee kept putting pressure on the Panthers. They were getting out of their snaps just a little too quick to try that to get back into pass blocking, and you had a lot of the pre-snap penalties towards yep. the end of the half. Well, in a couple of bright spots for Medina Valley, Carter Hewitt had a big return. He had it. I mean, it, it came back ten yards because of a hold, but still he flipped field position for the Panthers, and. A, a few times he was managed to break a pretty good play on that far sideline with his speed, making the first man miss. And he's been able to beat the cornerback two times down the field. If the pass was on target, he's probably got six points both times. So you have a big play capability. Now you need your young quarterbacks to dial it in, hit those passes, because it is the first game. You have Newton, who only played about a game and a half last year before he got injured. So he really doesn't have a lot of playing experience at the varsity level. And you have Gonzalez, who came in as a freshman last year. When Newton got hurt, he played the rest of the season. He did a pretty good job for, for being a freshman and being thrown into that. You're a sophomore now. And the two of them are competing for a starting job, and he had a little bit of jitters right there. Both have thrown an interception in this ball game, so you know, and both of them missed a big pass to Hewitt downfield. Newton missed one in the first quarter, and then uh, Gonzalez missed one in the second quarter. If they hit him, they're six points. So there are some bright spots for the Panthers. They're not out of this game by any means. It's twenty-one to nothing, but there was a lot of sloppy play, a lot of penalties. Things that if the Panthers can turn some of those things around in the second half, they have some a chance to get on the board here. If they hit a couple of those big passes, you know you can get that play action a little bit more. You can get Guerrero involved a little bit more, and if you can get him to start hitting five, six, seven yards a run, then your play action really opens up, and it's going to leave your receivers open downfield for Newton and Gonzalez to hit later on. But – the Panthers are going to need to score and get back into this ball game, and they're going to get the ball to start the second half first, and that first drive is going to tell a lot about what, you know, 
is this second half is going to be. Are we going to see more pre-snap penalties from the start? Or are we going to see the Panthers sustain a drive, maybe hit a big play, and get back into this? Well, and, and Medina Valley has forced two turnovers, but the difference is they've committed four, and Tyvee has responded by three touchdowns out of the four turnovers where Medina Valley didn't capitalize on one of the turnovers that they forced Tyvee into. So, you know, it's like you said, the first five minutes is going to tell a lot in the second half. The Panthers need to come out with some momentum and with a little bit of fire. It's not imperative, but it would really, really be very nice and get Panthers back in this ball game if they would score on that opening possession. And one thing we haven't talked much about is the Medina Valley defense. They were out on the field for a long, long time in that half. They started the game out pretty well, and – you know, when you're on the field, as long as they were, you're going to get wore down. Some things are going to happen. They had that 31-yard touchdown run where he was virtually untouched. But they played hard. They did some good things. They put pressure on the quarterback. They did force two interceptions. So the defense can force turnovers. That's something that's been lacking on the defensive end the last few years is they've had a hard time forcing turnovers. Well, they forced two in this ball game. Unfortunately, you've turned the ball over offensively four times. But as a defense, if you can turn the ball over and you can get your offense clicking a little bit, that'll give them some momentum and that'll give them a breather on the sidelines so that they're fresh at the end of the ball game. Yeah, the, the Panthers doesn't have any chunk plays with the exception of two, the one uh, pass to Guerrero and the one to Hewitt on the sidelines. But they haven't had anything over 10 yards except nope. those two plays right there. And you've, you've got to make a couple of those, as you said, just to soften up the opposing team's yep. defense, because right now, Tyvee's just laying their ears back, and they're coming after whichever quarterback the Panthers have back there. And unfortunately for the Panthers, the offensive line isn't holding up right now. No, and and that's gonna that's a big key in the second half is, and that's one of the things with Coach Britt now at the helm is, are we going to see adjustments in the second half, and how is he going to, you know, get them get those out there in this second half you know he, he's got a we've seen some coaches in the past where they've implemented second half changes the other teams countered with theirs and then you got to change some more sometimes we've seen no changes at all and and they're being down 21 to nothing something's got to give and we'll see if they make these changes at halftime and you know get something going and we are going to go ahead and take a break and then we're going to come back with the band you're listening to panther football and we will continue in just a moment. Sammy's Restaurant and Havy's Alsatian Bakery, two legendary landmarks in Castroville. From breakfast to delicious hometown lunch specials and more, Sammy's satisfies your taste buds with the unique flavor of Castroville. And from fresh baked breads to pies and pastries, South Texans have made Havy's Alsatian Bakery a must to visit since 1940. Sammy's Restaurant, online at sammysrestaurant.com. Havy's Alsatian Bakery, online at havysbakery.com. It's the biggest sale of the year at North Park Chevrolet in Castroville. Get a new Silverado Crew Cab posted at $37,999 or get $5,000 off Equinox or $7,000 off Traverse. 1.9% financing available on new Chevrolets. Plus get two years of no charge oil changes and one year of unlimited car washes with all new Chevrolets. Find new roads at North Park Chevrolet. 10 minutes outside Loop 410 in Castroville or at npchevy.com. Dotson House Moving and Construction is a fourth generation company operated by the same family for over 75 years. We do turnkey work from moving your structure, setting the foundation, and all your construction needs. Aluminum decking, concrete work, canopies, and any other need to make your project operational. From moving to construction, large or small, Dotson House Moving and Construction does it all. Located at 12939 Southwest Loop 410 in San Antonio. Give us a call at 210-628-1459.
South Texas Hardware has been serving the Medina Valley area since 1987. South Texas Hardware is a hardware store that thrives on the interaction between the business and its customers. From home maintenance to expert advice, South Texas Hardware can serve your needs. South Texas Hardware supports the Medina Valley and surrounding communities. Stop by and see what South Texas Hardware has to offer. South Texas Hardware, Highway 90 West in beautiful Castroville, Texas. Medina Healthcare System provides local residents with quality healthcare resources close to home without having to drive to San Antonio for their healthcare needs. Medina Healthcare System has stellar family practice physicians, a full-time OBGYN, a full-time surgeon, and very qualified nurse practitioners and physician assistants. Locations include Hondo, Divine, and Castroville. Visit medinahospital.net for more information. Medina Healthcare System, providing quality care close to home. All right, we are going to show the Top Cats and the band, and I want to remind everybody that this is a crowd mic that's going to be on, so whatever you hear out there, it's not us, and we apologize for it, but there's not much we can do about that unless we turn the sound off completely. So enjoy the band, and we'll be back at the end of halftime. Please sit back and enjoy as the Top Cats perform a jazz routine to Celebration. everyone aren't you glad you're a panther don't you wish everyone was now here they are from Fredericksburg to Gettysburg Austin to Boston Alice to Dallas from over the Red River to the Rio Grande and everywhere in between we are proud to present to you the pride of Medina Valley the mighty panther band The band is under the field direction of drum majors Dylan Lee, Hamid Wilson, and Ashley Persine. Color Guard officers are Captain Hannah Burrier, First Lieutenant Emily Rincon, and Second Lieutenant Danny DeHart. Our section of the week is the trombones. Band member of the week, Katarina Yeager. Color Guard member of the week, Isabella Hernandez. Now, the band will perform apart from the opener of their 2023 marching show, The Ascent. This year's show features the music of Kate Bush's Running Up the Hill and sections of Yagisawa's Hymn to the Sun with the Beat of Mother Earth. Featured soloists are Junior Cambry Delgado on flute and Junior Sarah Alvarado on clarinet. Now, we present a performance of pride, the Medina Valley Panther Marching Band.
the MV band is under the direction of Juan Carlos Rodriguez, Josue Solalinde, Jose Cruz, Raymond Cicuente, Jessica Maple, Kaylee Parker, and Carlos Jimenez. We would like to thank our student teacher, Caitlin Ramirez. The color guard instructor is Albert Riojas, Cassandra Ramirez assistant. The band would also like to thank marching Texas Sarah Hamm and Aiden Ramos, percussion techs Valeria Hernandez and Amelia De Leon. Please, everyone thank the Medina Valley ISD School Board and High School Administration for our beautiful new uniforms. All right, we're going to take a quick break and come back with the second half. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue here in just a moment. STRTC's partnership with Southwest Texas Junior College, Workforce Solutions Alamo, and ACOG Art gives a variety of options for education, workforce training, and transportation. Students can achieve their associate degree with day, evening, and internet class options, earn a certification in level one welding, beginner air conditioning and refrigeration, or earn five certifications as patient care technician. For more information, call 830-741-8347 or strtcinfo at hondo-tx.org. Rusty Rooster at 806 Highway 90 West in Castroville is the place to stop on your way home from work or to drop by on the weekend to grab some beverages without ever leaving your truck. Rusty Rooster, the place in Castroville for quenching your thirst from sun up to sundown. Drive through today, fast, convenient. That's Rusty Rooster, 806 Highway 90 West in Castroville. After all, anything goes till the rooster crows. Call State Farm Agent Hazel Russell in Castroville at 830-931-3441. Security State Bank, your financial partner since 1925 with one simple goal, to be the best bank possible to the families and businesses of South Texas. Check out Security State Bank's competitive rates and services from local people you know and trust. Serving South Texas with seven convenient locations, including 1726 Highway 90 East in Castroville. Call 830-538-9898 or online at securitystbk.com. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Tondre Gwynn Funeral Home in Castroville, Texas has been providing funeral services to families in the Medina Valley and surrounding areas for many generations. Tondre Gwynn Funeral Home is proud to support the broadcast by the Medina Valley Broadcast Network for the athletes and students participating in this event. Go Panthers! Tondre Gwynn Funeral Home, Castroville, Texas. You may view obituaries at Tondre, T-O-N-D-R-E dash Gwynn, G-U-I-N-N dot com or visit the Facebook page of Tondre Gwynn Funeral Home to view it's Medina Valley coming back out on the field here for the second half and we are ready to get the second half going the Panthers will get the ball to start the second half Kerrville got it to start the ball game the Tyvee Antlers lead 21 to nothing but Medina Valley not out of this by any means and you know there's been some things here and there the Panthers missed a couple of opportunities with Hewitt wide open weren't able to get him the ball um you know some another thing that I was thinking about at halftime too is some of these plays look like they're taking a long time to develop Mari and it's just it's not quick enough you know it, it takes forever to develop and by the time it happens there's a defender right there instead of you know, if you're going to throw that little hitch route out there to Hewitt on the side, the quarterback's got to get it and zip it to him quicker. quickly. He's got to be quicker. It's been a couple of occasions that they've nearly jumped that. Yes. Got to find something else that works. Yeah. And we'll start here with the opening kickoff, and we'll see if you're going to have Hewitt and Tercero back deep. They were sending Reza back there earlier in the ball game. They're sending Hewitt back there now because of his speed. And I think another thing that, that Hewitt brings that we saw in that first half from some of the other returners is the returners are running east and west instead of north and south. Hewitt, the couple of times he got a chance, he was trying to move the ball north and south, and this ball is going to be boomed into the end zone and threw it for a touchback. 
no chance on that one as number 82 Rivera booms it through the end zone. So Now, how can seconds run off the clock when it wasn't even touched? Yeah, how, how did the clock run when the ball wasn't even touched? But that doesn't make any sense. The clock's not supposed to start until the player touches the ball. Instead, they started it as soon as he kicked it. That's not supposed to be. Eleven fifty-eight to go in the third quarter. Wow. And so the Panther offense will come out on the field. First and ten from the twenty-five. Looks like Newton out there at quarterback. Takes the snap. They're going to give it to – it's a pitch, and somehow Newton got it away, and there's some running room for Reza, and he gets out to the 40-yard line. Looks like they'll spot him at the 39, and, I mean, Newton was getting hauled down when he pitched that. Now, Rocky De Leon saved what could have been a touchdown if Reza gets through that tackle, but nevertheless, that's a good positive play on first down. And a first down for the Panthers. 14-yard pickup that time. Out of the pistol, they'll empty the backfield as Guerrero goes in motion. They're going to swing it to him, and that might be a backwards pass as he falls on top of it. They're going to call it incomplete. It was close to being a lateral. It was, and it's a good thing it was incomplete. Otherwise, you'd have lost about seven yards. Instead, it's second down and ten. They wanted to get Guerrero in space with a couple of blockers in front of him. Unfortunately, that pass was behind him. They'll send Tercero in motion. They'll pitch it to Guerrero, who's going to try to cut it up the field. I think a flag came in. It I'm not sure. Came in on the edge, it looked yep. like, on the sideline. I think Guerrero actually he got back to the line of scrimmage. There's no gain on the play, but we'll see what the call is from the referee. They're still kind of talking it over. The head linesman talking to the Tyvee coach. This might be something like a sideline warning. Nope, false start against the Panthers. That was during declined, the Declined, and they declined it. So I wonder if it was illegal motion. No, he would have signaled that. He signaled false start. Yeah. So it's third down and 10. Newton to throw, fires over the head of Reza, incomplete, and it's fourth down. Reza was running an out route that time, and Newton just fired it over his head. And the Panthers are going to have to punt. So a 14-yard pickup and then nothing. Only run 45 seconds off the clock. Butler will be booting it away. Number 25, Flores back deep to receive, standing around his own 30-yard line. Butler with a good punt. Fair catch called for and made at the 23-yard line. Good punt by Butler. And Tyvee will start first and 10 at their own 23. And that Panther defense needs to get a spark, spark going here. Flip this field position. Yeah, turnover would be nice right here. Kincaid will be the quarterback. He's got three wide out to the left, one to the right side. Takes a snap, going to swing it out to the left, and he's got some room on the sideline before he's pushed out of bounds. Turned the corner, picked up. Well, it's going to – not as good a spot as what I thought. It's going to pick up about four yards on the play. It's going to bring up second down and six. Swung out to Vasquez on the – Reception. Martinez on the stop there for the Panthers. Vasquez still the lone back in there. Second down, six to go. Four wide outs here. Takes a snap, going to play action. Not going to call the hold that time. Now they throw a flag, and the quarterback's going to scramble himself. Gets across the 30 to the 32-yard line. 
but it got a flag, and you're going to get a hold against Tyvee. Okay. And they called the hold. And he throws it from the sidelines, and the guy closest to the play is watching it happen and doesn't throw it. Well, I wonder if he threw it on the receiver blocking right here in front of him because he threw it after he pushed him by. Well, now, obviously, number 16 for the Panthers, Morales, Morales was being held for about the eighth or ninth time tonight. Yeah. But it could have also been, like you said, on the receiver yep. out wide also. So they'll mark off the 10 yards. It's going to be second down still. The ball will move back to the 27-yard line. It's going to be second down at 16. Kincaid out of the shotgun here. Four wide outs for the Antlers. Takes a snap. Hands the ball off to Vasquez up the middle. Gets hit and brought down close to the 20-yard line. I think they'll actually give him the 19. Only picks up a couple, and it's going to be third and long. Fears and Gibson on the stop there for the Panthers. And, Mari, here's something. We've seen this before. And Kerrville's managed to have some, some things happen that got them first down. So Panthers need to get Tyvee off the field right here. Third down and 14. Kincaid to throw under pressure. Fires right side. Complete first down. Got it up to the 36-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds. Picked up 20 yards. He knew exactly where he needed to get yep. down in distance. Ran Two yards past the deal, turned around, and the ball was right there as soon as yep. he made his turn. That was number 11, Adam Chancellor on the reception, his first reception of the evening. Got him third and long once again, and the, and the Antlers have converted once again. So first down and 10, ball at the 36-yard line. Kincaid takes the snap, looking to throw, fires over the middle, Complete, taken down at the 48. There's a flag well, down. Well, you got a man downfield. 67 was way downfield. I think that's what you're going to get. Yeah, he's stand, he was standing near the end of the play. Well, you're going to get a holding hold. what they got. But well, it, either way, it's coming back, so that will negate that play. Would have been a first down again. Would have been another chunk play there yep. for the Antlers. Penalty is declined. It'll be second and ten. That doesn't make sense. Unless they called that an incomplete pass. I thought he caught it. I thought he did too, and it looked like they were giving him a reception. Anyway, it's second down and ten. They'll send a man in motion. Kincaid out of the gun. Takes the snap. They're going to hand it to Vasquez up the middle, and he is met immediately in a loss of a yard back to the 35, and it's going to bring up third and 11. Yeah, that was Morales once again for the Panthers, just stuffing that at the line of scrimmage. That's the only thing they could have done is that had to be an incomplete yeah. pass, and they just wanted to take the down. And not give them another down. Yep. So, so third down and 11 coming up here, so another third and long. The Panthers – with a chance again to try to get off the field and get their offense back out there. Kincaid out of the gun here, four wide, three out to the left. He's going to roll out to that side. On his feet, he's getting dragged down as he throws, and it's incomplete, nearly picked off by number six for the Panthers, good, Dylan Allen. Good pressure as uh, the Panther defender actually hit him in the arm and forced, forced the air and pass. That was number 26 for the Panthers. And so Medina Valley's going to get off the field here, and they're going to send Tercero and Hewitt back deep to receive here. Hopkins for the Panthers on the great defensive play. Rivera to punt, left-footed punter. See if Medina Valley can get a return here. They've muffed one punt already in this game, and there's a kick that's going to bounce. And the Panthers will let it bounce, and it's going to roll dead around the 26, 27-yard line. And that's where the Panthers will start. First and 10. You're going to get a late hit against Kerrville Tyvee right here in front oh of the Panthers. Oh, my. That was the good job is flopping no, I've ever seen. He sold that very oh good. Oh, my. 
<laughs> I ain't seen that since, a so since I watched soccer. I mean, give him credit. He oh, got yeah. the 15 yards for his team. He got it. <laughs> oh, my. And so we'll wait for the call from the head referee. He's got to be on sportsmanlike conduct. We still haven't signaled anything. No, not yet. You got unsportsmanlike conduct against Kerrville. Well, they ain't marked it off. No, that's 15 yards. Oh, they marked there. it both ways. Offsetting. Oh, offsetting penalties. Okay. <laughs> well, so all that does is go towards your personal foul count. Yep. But uh, it's still going to be first and 10 from the 27-yard line. I didn't see what the Medina Valley player did before that. But they I'm just, just yeah. smacked each other. And and Gonzalez in there, quarterback, pitches it to Guerrero, pulls free from one tackle, and he hard fought two yards on the play as he gets to the 30. It's going to be second down and eight. Aiden Irving on the stop there for Tyvee. Give him three. It'll be second and seven. But that's a hard fought three yards yes, for him, Mari. I mean, he's having to work hard to get two and three yards. Which, I mean, give Guerrero all the credit in the world. He's a hard runner. He always fights for yards. He's not easy to bring down, but he's not getting a lot of running room right now. They send Reza, Reza in motion. Takes the snap. Gives it to Guerrero right up the middle, and he's dropped for a loss of a yard. It's going to bring up third and eight. Yeah, he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Number 34 is having a field day in the backfield yep. for the Antlers. That's Landrum. And, and we've said it before, that play right up the middle, right behind the center and the guard, is not working for Medina Valley. Guerrero is getting stuffed every time. They're going to have to get him to the edges, get him outside the tackle or follow the tackles, or find a way to get the ball to him in space, as they've done earlier. Gonzalez to throw, fires it deep towards Hewitt. He's got a man in double coverage. That's got to be interference, and it is. They're going to get the flag in double coverage. That was a better pass that time. He gave Hewitt a chance, but he was covered up by two defenders, and fortunately you're going to get the pass interference call. That will give the Panthers a first down, so it will keep the drive going here for Medina Valley. So 15 yards, a first down. Just a case of Hewitt turning around looking for the ball and the defender's not. Well, and if you notice, that's an adjustment Kerrville made because earlier in the ball one game, on they, they had one-on-one. -on -one. This time they had the safety help over the top because they knew they got burned twice. Should have. Should have been. could have. Yes. Could have burned. Yeah. Because if the throw's on the money, there's two touchdowns for the Panthers. They're going to give it to Guerrero. Going right up the middle again. This time he's going to get about three yards on the play. About two and a half they'll give him. Nelson on the stop there for Tyvee. So it's going to bring up second down and a long seven. Ball up to the 47-yard line. 7.56 to play in the third quarter. Still 21 to nothing, Tyvee. Gonzalez to throw. Throws off his back foot down the middle of the field and... Tercero got turned around, and that's going to fall incomplete. Well, and Gonzalez just had to get rid of that one because there was pressure coming in his face once yep. again. That's going to bring up third down. Third down, seven to go. Four wideouts here for Medina Valley. Takes a snap. Gonzalez to throw. He's going to fire to Hewitt. Makes the catch at the 43-yard line of Tyvee, and he's thrown out of bounds. That's a first down for the Panthers. Need it seven, and he got nine. Good throw, good catch. Moves the chains once again. Number four was out there on the coverage. Nice for the Antlers. Into Tyvee territory here. Gonzalez takes a snap, pump fakes, lets it fly. He's got Hewitt out there, and he overshot him again, Maury. He but might he have was, roughing he, the quarterback Yeah, because he took a shot at the end of that. 
blow to the helmet, I think, is what the what the official signal first. We'll see if they – I I was watching the ball as it went downfield towards Hewitt. We'll see if it takes targeting, yep. and it is targeting against, against the Panthers. Against the Panthers? Yeah. Wow, okay. Ineligible downfield is what they called. He didn't say targeting. He said ineligible. He patted the top of his head. Okay. So it's second down and ten. They give to Guerrero right side. This time he breaks through the line and he gets up to the 30, down to the 35 yard line, picks up nine yards on the carry, and it's going to bring up third and one. Longest run of the night for Guerrero so far with that eight yard run. So Gonzalez took a pretty good shot at the end of that, but apparently it was clean and the Panthers had an ineligible. So third and one, and timeout quickly taken by Tyvee. They took it before the ball was snapped because the Panthers tried to go quick. With 7.13 to play here in the third quarter, Tyvee now with two timeouts remaining. Timeout brought to you by Peerless Equipment. And Mari, for the first time, Medina Valley sustaining a drive. They picked up more than one first down on this drive. They've moved into Tyvee territory. Now they have to finish a drive. Well, That's uh, and you're facing third and short. short. Yep. No pre-snap penalties here. you got a very manageable third down. If you don't get it, you have no choice. You have to go for it on fourth down. Right. And you wonder here, too, what Medina Valley is going to do, if they're going to try to go to Guerrero, the hard runner, or if they're going to try something, a little play action with him and try to get somebody open, knowing that Tyvee's going to key on him. Maybe try to hit a home run, catch him. Yep. Because you still have Crowded. fourth down to yep. pick up a first if you don't get this. Because the Panthers will go for it here on fourth down if it's if it's fourth and one like it is now. So third down and a yard to go. Takes the snap. Looking to throw. Gonzalez makes a man miss. Now he throws off his back foot. Did he make the catch? No, they're going to say incomplete right at the sticks. That pass was intended for Reza, I believe. Yeah, it was Reza. Wasn't able to get his hands underneath it. It's going to be fourth and a yard. Gonzalez did a good job of just avoiding the pressure there. He had yeah. a, uh, he had a Adler in his face. Yeah, and he made him miss and was able to gather himself enough to get that ball off. Almost got the first down, but it's going to be fourth and a yard. Guerrero the lone back. They send a man in motion. Gives to Guerrero. He's got a first down and more. Up to the down to the 25. And he's taken down around the 23 yard line. Good play there for the Panthers. And that's twice they've run off tackle right side. And they've had the success because yep. they've gone away from right in the middle of the defense. That's where they've had success is on the edges of that line, not right up the middle. And they've had two good runs this time doing that. Moving him over a gap. First down and 10. They send Reza, or Guerrero in motion out to the left. Empty the backfield. Guerrero, uh, Gonzalez looking to throw. Rolling right side. Throws off his back foot. Incomplete. Just threw it away over on the far sideline that time. I would have liked to have seen him tuck that ball and run yeah. north and south. Because if he gets by 34, he has a lot of open field in front of him. Goes as an incompletion. It's second down and 10 coming up. And that's inexperience. You know, he's, he's looking for the pass first. The good thing that he did there is he decided to throw it away and not try to hit a big play knowing it's first down. You've got three more. Out of the play action. Now he's going to try to run it himself as he turns the corner and he gets taken down on the far sideline. Good game, though. Yep, he might have picked up five or six. We'll see where they spot him. Looks like around the 19-yard line. And it's going to bring up third down and six. Yeah, third down, six to go. Ball at the 23. Three, about the 23 and a, well, they'll say a 19. Ball at the 19 yard line. Takes that snap, looking to throw on third down over the middle, incomplete. That was intended for Reza, and that ball was, that was underthrown. Th that was well covered, yeah. though. And it's going to bring up fourth down and six. Now, 
you know, I remember last year we saw Reza making a living out of that yep. backfield on that little swing pass, remember? Yep. And, and uh, unfortunately for the young man, he could never really stay healthy. As you, as you notice, he's got that knee brace on. It hampered him all last year. I was just thinking of that. I want to see some vintage rays again on that little swing pass, yeah. maybe. Yeah, and a timeout taken here by Medina Valley on fourth down and six. And, you know, Mario, we talked about they've, they've sustained this drive here. They've done a good job sustaining it, but now you're forced into a fourth down and six yeah, situation. And the field goal does you no good no, here. No, not at all. With 547 to place, so you got – Roughly a quarter and a half to go, just under a quarter and a half to go. You got to get a score on the board here and try to get some momentum back on your side. Prove to yourself you can put it in the end zone, but you got to pick up this fourth down here because it does you no good if you can move the balls between the 20 and you can't finish it off. Well, I'd like to see him go back in a standard shotgun. Yeah. And let they, they are over aggressive pursuing maybe a screen pass or a draw or something yeah. here. To, to keep him honest a little bit on that front line. Well, and if you put him back in the normal shotgun, you give him a couple more yards to be able to get a pass off quicker. You know, he can get it off without somebody right there in his grill. Fourth down, six to go here. They'll have two wide receivers on each side of the formation. The ball on the right hash. Out of the pistol. Guerrero, the lone back, takes a snap. Rolling out right side, throws off his back foot, incomplete over the head of his intended receiver. And it's going to be a turnover on downs as the Panthers, as the Tyvee defense holds. He that had, pass was intended for Galleon in the middle of the field. He, he had, had him, him open, but he had pressure in his face once again. Well, and that's the thing. He, the, Number zero was all over him in the backfield. They're trying to roll him out to buy him time, but the pocket's not moving with him. Well, and they're rolling him into the coverage. Yep. On that side, they've rolled him, and, and they rolled into him to the his strong side. side the, yep. Into his throwing side, but he's having to throw under duress every time he does that because he's had somebody in his face. So it's first and ten for Tyvee. Rhodes back out there at quarterback, Julian Rhodes. Number 23, Vasquez is the lone back as they send a man in motion. Takes a snap. Looking to roll out, rolling, rolling, throws complete up to the 28. And then he gets a, about seven more yards up to the 35-yard line. It's going to be a first down, picked up 16 yards, 17 yards. Stanton on the stop there for the Panthers. I think that was Stormy Rhodes on the reception. And there was a lot of padding there. A lot of pad between the quarterback and the wide receiver. And he was just able to turn around and make that catch easily. Rhodes out of the shotgun again. They sent a man in cross in motion. Snap was on the ground for a second, but he gets away. And he's going to tuck tail and run up to the 40. Gets across to about the 41, 42-yard line before he's brought down. But he picks up another six yards. Villegas on the stop there for Medina Valley. Kind of a broken play as that ball was on the ground. Snapped back to him on the on the turf. Along with Gibson Conrad. Second down and four here. Rhodes to throw. Fires quickly complete. And he's taken down for a loss back at the 40-yard line. Good job by the Panther defense that time. It's going to bring up third and six. Yeah, great coverage out there on the edge for the Panthers. Warren, I think, was leading the charge there for Medina Valley. 420 to go. Third down, six to go. Big play here for the Panther defense. Get them off the field. They look to the sideline for the play call. They have it. Two wide on each side. Rhodes will send a man in motion right to left. Flags come in. False start against Kerrville Tyvee. So that'll make it third down and 11 now with four minutes to play in the third quarter. Panthers subbing in, changing some coverage here. So third down, 11 to go here for Medina Valley. <laughs> Out of the shotgun, Rhodes takes a snap, looking to throw under pressure, and he's going to get sacked back at the 25-yard line 
Both both ends coming quickly off the line, untouched. Now that was Jacob Warren first there for the Panthers. Great play by the Panther defense. Makes it fourth down on the sack, and Tyvee will have to punt with 3.27 to play and counting here in the third quarter. Landon Burns, the other Panther there on the stop. So it'll be Hewitt and Tercero back deep. Rivera to boot it away. Rivera takes the snap, gets the punt away, and it's not a good one. An end-over-end -end kick that's going to bounce. It takes a Tyvee bounce, though, and will roll dead at the 42-yard line. Not the best punt by Rivera, but he makes it work. But the Panthers will have it at their own 42 to start the drive, so good field position. But Medina Valley... You know, they they sustained that drive last time, but they took a lot of time off the clock, and they didn't score. Yep. And you're still down 21 to nothing. You've got to find a way in the end zone yeah, here. Yeah, you've got to score here in this possession. They send a man in motion. Newton takes a snap, gives it to Guerrero, who falls forward for a gain of two. Gets it to the 44-yard line. It'll be second and eight. Floor is for the Antlers on the stop. Newton out of the pistol. Guerrero is loaned back. Four wideouts here. 2.38 to play in the third. Takes a snap. Gives to Guerrero again up the middle, and he's across midfield, close to a first down. I think he's going to be, depends on the ball spot, and I think they're going to get it. He's right at the marker, and they do give him the first down. He carried gets, Flores for the first down. Gets it to the 48-yard line of Tyvee. And so the Panthers with the first down in Tyvee territory again here. In the pistol again, they send a man in motion. Give to Guerrero, and this time he stopped right away at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. And, Maury, that might have been the perfect time for a play action right there after you just had Guerrero with a good run that keyed on him. Yeah, he ran right into the back of his blocker and just could not get around number 89. So second down and 10 coming up here. We'll see if we can... Get something going here for the Panthers. A minute 43 to play in the third. Panthers still down 21 to nothing. And Newton, quarterback draw, trying to get outside. He's not going anywhere. Got back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third down. And now you got a flag that came in very a late. late hit. They're going to yep. get number 54 for a late hit. 34 gets credit for the stop, but somebody came in late using the headgear. Dead ball, personal foul against Kerrville Tyvee, so that'll give the Panthers an automatic first down and 15 more yards. You'll take it if you're the Panthers. Absolutely. And this ball will move down to the 33-yard line of Kerrville, where it'll be first down and 10 for the Panthers. Twenty-one nothing was our halftime score. It's still there now in the third. Panthers threatening, looking to try to cap off a drive for the first time this season. Takes a snap, gives to Guerrero right side. He bursts through for about five or six yards, depending on the ball spot. Good pickup on first down. Absolutely tripped up once again by thirty-four Landrum. They'll give him six yards. It'll bring up second down and four. Panthers quickly to the line. Back to Guerrero again, right side. There's a flag down very way in the backfield. Too many men on the field. The run would be very close to a first down. He was right there at the sticks. Illegal yep. substitution against Kerrville Tyvee. They that's why, we, went, the field. that's yep. why we went up there and went for the quick snap because the guy didn't get off the field in time on defense Well, on the that substitution. A, that's going to give them the first down on the penalty. They need it four yards and get five with the penalty. It's first down for Medina Valley at the 22-yard line. 52 seconds to go here in the third. Newton out of the pistol, four wide out here for the Panthers. Takes the snap. 
Looking to throw. Fires right side, and Hewitt fell down. He slipped trying to turn his route to the outside right there, and unfortunately not able to make the play, and it'll be second down and ten. Yeah, just lost his footing out of the break. Clock stops, 41 seconds to go in the third. Seventeen on the play clock as the Panthers come to the line of scrimmage. Newton out of the pistol. Four wide again. Guerrero the lone back. Takes the snap. Gives to Guerrero up the middle with some room to run. Cuts it to the outside. Makes a cut back and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. A 22-yard touchdown run for Anthony Guerrero. No flags on the field. And it's 21-6 as the Panthers finally get on the board here with 34 seconds to play in the third quarter. Feed the beast. And, it, and that's that same play they've been running. It's, it's just between the guard and the tackle, and they're finding running room over there with Guerrero. Good they've blocking had, downfield by his wide receiver to allow him to get the final five yards for the touchdown. So rips on to try to tack on the extra point. Good snap. Not a deep, great hold, but the kick is up and good. Somehow he got that through. It was kind. I don't know if the holder kind of slipped with that or what, but... Rips got it into the goalpost nonetheless and makes it 21 to 7 your score. As the Panthers score here with 34 seconds left in Mari Medina Valley. Not out of it not just yet. Not out of yet. it just yet. They've played a pretty good third quarter here. We'll see if they can gain some momentum from this and keep it going. Defense is forced two turnovers via the downs in that in the third quarter to keep the Panthers in the ball game. Let's see if they can respond one more time here on defense. This kickoff will be brought to you by Medina Electric Cooperative. As Gavin Rips will get ready to boot it away. For Tyvee, they'll send back number five, Caden Brown. And I believe that's number 25. Flores and number 23 Vasquez are the three men back deep for the Antlers and they're up ready in case Medina Valley tries something here they were ready for ready a quick for a onside quick, yep. so Rips ready right footed kicker he will boot it away. He kind of squibs it down the middle of the field. The ball's on the ground. Touched by number nine. Still rolling around. It's finally picked up by the Antlers. And they'll have it first and ten at their own 24-yard line. 31 seconds to play in the third quarter. And if you're the Panthers here, the main thing is, is get Kerrville back off the field. You, your defense has played well. Two turnovers two, on two, downs. Yep. On two, this. Well, they've had. Yeah, two punts so yep, far in this punts. half. You'd like to keep it that way or maybe force a turnover, something here, but you got to get them back off the field and not let them eat up some time. Because like we said, Medina Valley not out of this game by any means, down two scores. It's going to be Kincaid back in there at quarterback. Four wide, takes the snap, looking to swing it quickly, and that's bad it down. That's Morales again getting back there and getting his hands on the football, and that's going to be a complete second and ten. Yeah, they wanted to hit number 23 out of the backfield, Vasquez. It was just a little swing pass over to him quickly, and Morales got in there and got his hands up and knocked it down. Unfortunately, he was too close to the play because if he's a little farther away, that's probably a pick six. Could have yeah, brought it in. Second down, 10 to go. Kincaid out of the gun. Takes that snap. Going to throw out the play action. Rolling out to the right side. Kincaid throws on the run. He's got a man complete. There's a flag down in the middle of the field. I think that's ineligible. And number seven still on the run here for Kerrville. He's finally taken down around midfield. That was Carson Jones on the reception. But I think they're going to get an ineligible receiver downfield. And that is the call, ineligible against Kerrville. And see, that's a tough, that's a tough play for your offensive yep. lineman. 
Your quarterback looked like he was going to tuck and run on that busted play. Yep. But give your quarterback credit because he was looking downfield for the open receiver. That's tough on the offensive line. All it's a, it's the right call, but that's tough. Well, and Jones was just dragging across the field, and he was right between the two defenders. And Kincaid made a great play throw on the run, but it's going to bring up second down and fifteen. That might do it for this third quarter. And it is going to do it for the third quarter. Tyvee's going to let it run out as we will go to the fourth quarter. 21-7, to Tyvee leading Medina Valley. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in a moment. Nobody can design, create, or maintain your lawn better than 3D Landscaping and Irrigation. With over 17 years of experience, owner Ray Doyan and his crew take pride in their craftsmanship and service. They're fully insured, offer free estimates, and multiple references. So you know you're getting the best. 3D does landscaping, lawn maintenance, irrigation, tree installation, lighting, and more. Whether it's residential or commercial, 3D Landscaping and Irrigation has you covered. Give 3D a call at 830-985-9115 or find us online at threedlandscaping.com. It's the biggest sale of the year at North Park Chevrolet in Castroville. Get a new Silverado Crew Cab posted at $37,999. Or get $5,000 off Equinox or $7,000 off Traverse. 1.9% financing available on new Chevrolets. Plus get two years of no charge oil changes and one year of unlimited car washes with all new Chevrolets. Find new roads at North Park Chevrolet. 10 minutes outside Loop 410 in Castroville or at npchevy.com. Welcome back here to Panther Stadium as we go to the fourth quarter. 21-7, Kerrville leading Medina Valley. The Antlers with the football. It will switch sides of the field. Kerrville now going right to left. The ball at their own 19-yard line. It'll be second down and 15 to, to go here. Panthers trying to find a way to get this football back. It was 21 to nothing at halftime. Kincaid. Takes that pass, swings it out right side, and it falls incomplete. The referees kind of let that play go on too long as they were playing that like it might have been a fumble, but nonetheless, it's an incomplete pass, and it's third down and 15. Need to get them off the field right here. Yep. You cannot let them convert like they've done in the past in this ball game. That Panther defense has been better, though, here in the third quarter. Third down, 15 to go here. Kincaid out of the gun. He's got two wide on each side of his formation as they go right to left. Takes a snap, looking to throw. Sets up, fires in the middle of the field. Makes the catch, but short of the first down. There's a flag that comes in after the play. We'll see what this is. Wow, if that's if against that's Medina against, Valley, that's wow. And it, I think it's going to be. But what? Personal foul. Face mask. Oh, my. So that'll give him a first down. It was. I well, didn't even see it because it was well short. he got hit from behind and wrapped up. I, I don't know if it was after somebody else came in. I didn't see the face mask. But that's it was well short of the first down, and now it's going to be first down and 10 from the 40. And the Panthers had a chance to get this ball back with 11.47 to go, and it said it's first and 10. Low snap, Kincaid takes it, swings it out to Vasquez, right side. He's going to get a few yards, but he's gang tackled after a gain of about three. Going to be second down and seven. Rejo there for Medina Valley on the stop, along with Crisp. And now Kerrville's, I mean, and rightly so, they're starting to take their time here. Trying to eat clock. And if you're the Panthers, that's a good thing. If they're playing this game not to lose, that could that could go into the Panthers' favor, but they got to step up here on the defensive end. Takes the snap, gives it off. Vasquez, who's met in the backfield and ripped to the ground. They'll give him forward progress up to the 41-yard line, but a, gain, a loss of two on the play. It'll be third down and nine. Morales on the final stop, but it was blown out up first by Gibson Conrad. For the Panthers. Wow, I thought he lost some yardage there. He did. He lost two yards. Okay. It's third down and nine. It was it was second and seven. Second and seven. Okay. Well, I thought they lost more, than, more that. than that. Yeah. yeah. So third and nine here for the Panthers. 
Kincaid takes the snap, gives it to Vasquez right side. Look, got some running room, but he's going to be short. Fumble the ball's on the ground, and I think the Panthers have it. We're waiting for a sign. And it is Medina Valley football as the Panthers force the fumble, and they come away with it here right at midfield. I think on the extra effort, Vasquez trying to get the first down. It got swiped away. It was on the far sideline over there, and the Panthers get it at midfield with 10-12 to play in the fourth quarter, down 21-7. Morales was the Panther that came up with the loose pigskin. And here's the Panther offense back out on the field here. Michael Newton will lead his team back out there. They scored on their last possession. Panthers come out with four wide. Guerrero the lone back. He scored on a 21-yard scamper his last time. Newton to throw. With time. Fires deep down the left side. He's got Newt Hewitt who couldn't quite bring it in. He tried with one hand to make the catch, and it falls incomplete right around the 10-yard line. Hewitt had a step on yeah. him once oh. again. And Almost Newton, brought it in. And Newton put more air under it. He gave him a chance to make the play. He just couldn't come down with it. Good coverage also on the play, but it's second down and 10. I like the idea there, trying to hit the home run. Takes the snap, gives to Guerrero, and he is met immediately, and he spins for a yard. It's going to bring up third and nine. Sanchez on the stop there. Num big number 99 in yep. the center of that defense. And, I mean, that's... That's what they've been doing right there up the middle. That's where Medina Valley has not been able to run the ball tonight. So third and nine here, 9.44 to play. Big third down for the Panthers. Newton in the pistol. Four wide out here. Takes a snap. Looking to throw. Sets up. Fires right side. Complete. Hewitt stepped out of bounds. I think he's going to be show. They're going to say he was out of bounds when he caught it. No reception. Oh, my. He didn't get his wow. foot down. You got to go for it. It's fourth down and nine here. Ball at the 49-yard line of Tyvee. And Panthers will go for it here with 9.26 to play in the fourth quarter. Down by two scores. Newton out of the gun. Panthers look to the sideline for the change. They figured it out here. Got seven seconds. Five on the play clock. Newton gets the football, looking to throw. Under pressure, fires, middle of the field, incomplete. There's a flag down on the far sideline that came in very late. And Ineligible were, downfield against the Panthers, so that, they'll decline this. I don't understand how, how that could be because he got rid of that ball quick. Yeah. And that's going to be a turnover on downs against the Panthers with 9.20 to go, and Tyvee will get the football back. So the Panthers recover the fumble and aren't able to do anything. They get one yard of offense after that. So your defense is asked to make a play again now. Ball at midfield for the Antlers. 9.20 to play. This is Rhodes back in there at quarterback for the Antlers. Rhodes out of the gun. Takes the snap, looking to throw. With time, now he's rolling out to the right. A flag comes in, probably a hold. Pass was caught, but I believe out of bounds. Yeah, they're going to get a hold on... Tyree, they were holding number 44 for the Panthers. Yeah, and that is the call. So it's going to – well, we'll see if Medina Valley does. They declined one last time to take the down. I'd almost have to move them back. No, I, I agree. And they are. They're going to mark it off. They'll move them back to the 40 here. It's going to be first down at 20. Vasquez, the lone back. Rhodes out of the gun. Vasquez to his left. Four wide out here. 
They'll send a man in motion, takes the snap, gives it to Vasquez, right side, spins around, trying to find room, and he's going to get none. Actually lost a yard. It's going to bring up second and 21. Burns on the stop there for the Panthers. Good job by that Panther defense to string that play out and not let him get to the edge. 8.53, Panthers still with all of their timeouts left, but down two scores. Had a golden opportunity, had the ball with about 10 minutes left and only able to get one yard and had to go, well, they went for it on fourth down and turned it over on downs. Second and 21 here. Rhodes wants to throw. Oh, That's going to be false start. The, the back move before anybody did. False start against the Antlers, so it's going to be second and 26 coming up here for Tyvee. <clears throat> Rhodes will be in the gun as they look to the sideline for the play and like I said Maury they're taking all the time they can at the clock not running at 827 but Tyvee is taking more time than they were earlier in this ball game trying to Eat what they can. Rhodes to throw with time. Fires left side, right side complete. Up to the 43-yard line. You'll give him that little one underneath. Yeah, he got nine yards. It's going to bring up third and 17. The Panther player needed to be careful there as he was on the ground. That guy came in late and made, the, made a hit on him on the ground. He's very fortunate they didn't call him for a late hit. Because this isn't like the pros. When he's down, he's down. You don't have to touch him. Third down and 17. 7.50 to play here in the ball game. Four wideouts here. Panthers trying to get off the field. Third and 17. Rhodes looking to throw. Had to roll out right. Throws on the run. Complete but short of the first down. Down to the 49-yard line of Medina Valley. He's going to be four yards shy. And we'll see what Tyvee elects to do if they want to punt and play field position with a two-score lead, or if they want to try to go for it here on fourth and four. Hello. And at the moment here, they're keeping the offense on the field. But they're looking to the sideline well, we to, like as we try to see. And now timeout's going to be taken by Kerrville. Oh, they're going to take the delay a game, and then they're going to punt to give them the extra room. And they ran the full 25 seconds off the clock. Yep. So 6.50 to play. They're going to try to pin Medina Valley deep. We'll see if Hewitt or Tercero can get a return in here. Makes it fourth and nine. Ball at the 49-yard line. A good snap. Left-footed punter gets it away. It's not a good one. It's a short punt that will bounce at the 28-yard line and go sideways and will be downed at the 24. It's only about a 20-yard punt right there. That wasn't a good punt. No. 25-yard punt. But nonetheless, Medina Valley is going to have it with 6.36 to go. Takes the... Hand off right up the middle, and he gains two yards on the play. And with, with the amount of time that's left, Maury, needing two scores and where you're at. Floor is on the stop there. A two-yard pickup. Takes a snap, throws it out left side, and that's going to be a motion. You're going to get a false start against the Panthers here.
And that is the call. False start against Medina Valley. And I know uh, Hewitt is your fastest guy out there, your game breaker. But I see the Panthers continually just going to one side of the field. Yeah. You know. So second down and 13, and they give it up the middle to Guerrero, who gets back to the original line of scrimmage here. It's going to be third down and 10. I mean, you had six minutes left in the ball game. You're eating clock here, not trying to get chunk plays, and now you're faced with third down and 10. Flores once again on the stop. You're not out of this ball game by any means, Mari. I don't. Out of the shotgun, looking to throw. Fires over the middle, incomplete on the slant route. Pass was intended for Galleon that time. And now it's fourth down and ten, and are they going to go for it here deep in their own territory? There was Nice on no. the coverage. They're going to punt. And you can, you can atone that to running the ball on first and second down when you've got six minutes left. You're on your own 24-yard line, and you're down two scores. Sandwiched in between a false start. Yeah. And Butler ready to boot it away. Flores standing back around his own 45. And Butler with the punt. It's a good one as it bounces at the 45 and then goes out of bounds around the 41-yard line of Kerrville. Good punt by Butler, but it's Kerrville ball with 527 to go. First down and 10. Yep. If you ever need a quick turnover, it's right here. Yep. A few of the Panther fans... Heading to the exits. Try to beat the traffic out of here. Out of the shotgun here, Rhodes takes the snap. Going to hand it to Vasquez right up the middle. He's met immediately, and he will lose two yards on the play. Back to the 40, and he'll bring up second down and 12. Morales and Riegas on the stop. Out of the shotgun, Rhodes. Second and 12 takes the snap. Going to keep it himself, and he's going to lose a few yards on the play. Back to about the 37-yard line. Four and a half minutes to play. It's third down. They can eat another 30 seconds off the clock right now. Panthers are going to use a timeout. And that is their first timeout with 4.22 to go. Timeout sponsored by Peerless Equipment. It's a good timeout there. Keep the antlers from running another 25 seconds off the clock. Panthers defense, Jared, in this second half have done what they needed to do. Yeah. Pitch a shutout. The offense just has only mustered one scoring drive, though, in return. So you need to stop them here on third down. Get them to punt the ball, and you ha you got to have a little bit more urgency yeah. when you get the ball here. Yeah. <clears throat> 
So big play coming up for the Panthers defense here. Rhodes out of the shotgun here on third down and 15. Takes a low snap, looking to throw. Still with time. Now he fires it over to the right side and just throws it out of bounds. Hey, so that stops that the clock stops for the, the Panthers. Clock. Absolutely. 4-16 to play here in the fourth quarter, and the Panthers are going to get it back as they're going to have to they're going to have to punt. We'll see if. But but they are they are way too deep right here. You need to get up to the forty yard line here. You're you're, well, you're expecting him to punt at sixty five yards. Well, he's done it, and he's he's kicked some good ones, and then he's kicked some bad ones. This is a better punt that's going to fall around the thirty though. Hits at the twenty nine, and they're going to let it roll. Down to about the 26-yard line. Got a flag but down. There is a flag at the 42-yard line. It's going to be post-possession. Medina Valley is going to get the ball, but this could be a holding penalty against the Panthers, and they move it further back. It is a block in the back against the Panthers. So that will hurt Medina Valley. It will just give them – Worst field position to start with. 4.06 to play. The Panthers with two timeouts remaining in this quarter or in this half. Down 21 to 14. And the Panthers are going to have to start throwing the ball, Mari. They're not going to be able to run the ball with Guerrero here because it's just going to eat the clock. And now they're marking it back. I don't know if they called it unsportsmanlike conduct. I didn't see a referee Penalty, make but more they than marked one it 15 more yard, 15 yards back the other way. Yeah, they did. And it's up to the 36-yard line for the Panthers, and that's where they're going to start. So you had a block in the back, and then I think you had a dead ball personal foul after the fact. Takes a snap. Newton to throw. Fires complete. Well, they're going to blow this play dead. Why? Well, there's no flags down. They no. just. Yeah, I don't think they round the clock. Now we're ready to go. 4.02 to play. Ball at the Panther 36. 21 7. Tyvee leads. First things first, the Panthers have to score. Newton out of the gun, takes the snap, gives it to Guerrero, up to the 41-yard line, a five-yard pickup, and the clock continues to run with 3.55 to go, and it's second and five. Floor is on the stop. And no urgency here. They're not getting to the line quick enough. 3.45 to play. Still no play in. Now they get to the line. Newton out of the gun. Takes the snap, looking to throw, fires quickly, Hewitt incomplete. Second down, it'll bring up third down and five after the incompletion. And, Mar, you got to pick up this first down, but you can't nickel and dive them down the field. You're going to have to hit some 15, 20-yard plays here, some 10-yard 10, 10 plays and things like that. You can't keep going five yards, five yards, five yards, or you're going to eat this whole clock up and not have anything left. You got a score, yes, but you, you're still in this ball game. Third and five. Give to Guerrero up the middle. He's going to get the first down. He picks up six yards, seven yards on the carry. Landrum on the stop for the Antlers, but so, the chains will move. So they'll stop the clock to move the chains. They'll whistle the clock to start when the ball's set. Now they do with 325 to go. First and ten. Takes a snap. Newton to throw. Let's it fly downfield. He's got Galleon incomplete. No flag down on the play. It's going to bring up second and ten. He thought he had Galleon's jersey from behind, but I don't think where the referee was standing that he could see that. 3.13 to play, second and ten. Notice, Maury, that they're not playing a prevent defense. They're still playing man-to-man -man coverage with one man over the top. 
Offsides. Offside against Kerrville as they run the ball for two yards. And the offside's going to make it second down and five as it'll move across midfield to Tyvee territory. Newton out of the pistol. Four wideouts here for the Panthers. And the Tyvee, Coach, I think he took a timeout over there. He was flying down the sideline. I don't know what he saw that he didn't like. No, but there was but something that he was. He didn't like no, something. No, he flew down that sideline to get the timeout called. And we're going to take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Peerless Equipment. We'll cont- or you're listening to Peerless Equipment sponsors the timeout. And we're going to stay here now. Um those are quick commercials to try to yep, get in. Yeah, but, but the, the timeouts are brought to you by Peerless yes. Equipment. But we're trying to get – we have a lot of sponsors, and we've gotten just about all of the spots that are promised to them played, and we still have the post game. But we've only got about five or six more to get in, but we'll get them in. 3.09 to play. Second down and five out of the timeout. Newton out of the pistol. Three wide receivers, actually four. The trips are close. Looking to throw. Hewitt makes the catch at the 39, trying to get out of bounds. He stays inbounds, but he picks up the first down. Picks up seven yards, and they'll stop the clock. They stopped the clock very late. About 60 seconds ran off the clock before they stopped it for the first down. Now they wind the clock. Ready to go here. Same formation for the Panthers. 2.54 to play. Newton takes the snap. Looking to throw. Fires it right side towards Hewitt. And he can't make the one-handed grab down there in the double coverage. Falls incomplete. It'll bring up second and ten. I think, Mari, that one's got to be caught. That one was on his one hand right there. Yeah, that was a good pass right there. Yeah. Newton's been a lot closer with those those last two or three times. You're waiting. One of these times he's... Hopefully going to hit one. Gives it to Guerrero. Left side, nothing doing. No gain on the play. Third and ten. Clock running at 240. He barely got the handoff. That was bobbled at the exchange there. You're you're in four-down territory here. 230 to play. Panthers still with one timeout to go. I think they have two left, but the, the scoreboard's not right. It shows they have five. That's not right. Out of the gun. Newton to throw. Fires over the middle. Galleon makes the catch, and he's going to be close to the first down. I think he's a yard shy. It's going to bring up fourth and one at the 30. Good catch. Good job of bringing it in. Good catch in traffic. That, that was not Galleon. Yeah, that, that was, was number, number 80. 80. That was uh, Dacian So. Senior wide receiver made that catch from the slot receiver position. Fourth down in a yard here. Takes the snap. Going to throw. Fires it right side. Galleon can't get there incomplete. Perfect and that play call had him yeah, caught he had it. by surprise. It just could not execute. Nope. Yep, that was a perfect play call that time. He had Galleon wide open out there, and he – he didn't throw a beautiful pass, but Galleon made every effort he could to try to get to it. It falls incomplete with a minute 41 to go. And it's a turnover on downs as Tyvee will take over possession. Hmm. Rhodes out of the... Shotgun, minute 41 to go. Takes the snap, rolling out right, looking to run it himself, and he's going to get tackled for a loss of about three or three on the play. And the clock will run. Morales on the stop there for the Panthers, along with Fears. Well, Maury, there are some positives to take from the second half, at least. We outplayed them. Yeah. He outscored them here 7 to nothing in this second half. 
The defense stepped up when they needed to. The penalties were held to a bigger minimum than they were. Rhodes looking to run. There's a flag down for a hold. Rhodes got back to the original line of scrimmage. Villegas on the stop for the Panthers. If you're the Panthers here, you have to decline this and take third down and ten. Well, the Panthers are signaling a timeout, I believe. Yeah, they want to stop the clock with so. 51 seconds because they have two left. They can get this ball back. And they do decline the penalty and take a timeout. We'll take a quick break. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in a moment. Dodson House, House Moving, Moving and Construction, Construction is a fourth-generation company operated by the same family for over 75 years. We do turnkey work from moving your structure, setting the foundation, and all your construction needs. Aluminum decking, concrete work, canopies, and any other need to make your project operational. From moving to construction, large or small, Dodson House Moving and Construction does it all. Located at 12 939 Southwest Loop 410 in San Antonio. Give us a call at 210-628-1459. Welcome back here to Panther Stadium as we come out of the timeout that is brought to you by Peerless Equipment. Broadcast brought to you by North Park Chevrolet and Dotson House Moving. And it's third down, 12 to go. They hand the ball off up the middle with Vasquez, and he's taken down immediately at the 30-yard line. That must have been the last time out Medina Valley yeah, had. Because it's the clock's gonna run now. They have to re They'll have to snap it with about four seconds left, three seconds left. And all they had to do is just run around for just a little bit and, and the game's fall over. On it, yeah. Well, and they're gonna go for it here. They're just gonna run the ball on fourth down and, and waste the time. Right. Or run it all the way down and take a five-yard penalty. And then right, and punt it away. And I think that's what they're going to do. I wouldn't even punt it. I'd take a – I'd center it back to the punter, let him run around for a little bit, and then yep. just take a knee. <coughs> One second left. So the, 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 the play clock expired I don't with even, three seconds left. They stop it with I know, one. I know. They ran two seconds <laughs> off the clock on the, on the kickoff. And nobody touched the ball. There's been – this is – wow. There's been a lot of weird stuff happen there. But, nonetheless, I mean, that's no – No, it didn't affect It, it didn't affect the outcome here. No. But but you got to take into account Medina Valley played better in this second Absolutely. half. They Absolutely. They outscored them 7 to nothing in this half. Kerrville did not score. The defense looked better. The Panthers only turned the ball over on downs in this half. And – Created a turnover of their own on the fumble. Unfortunately, they weren't able to do anything with that. But they capped off a drive. They limited the penalties. They had a few. I don't. I don't think there was more than one or two false start penalties from the, the Panthers in half. the second half. So things did turn around here in the second half, and that's something to build off of. Right. You know, it's the first game of the year. It's not district. Look, like they put four but seconds on the clock now. <laughs> next week. Next week is a different animal because yes, John, John Jay, Jay is a good team. Yes, they're yep. very good. Yep. You're going to have to really clean up the mistakes well, and, next and, week. For and next like week. you see before, sometimes the defense is ahead of the offense when you start the season. That was the case here tonight. But you've seen some, some things out of this offense. They have the capability to hit some big plays. They've got some speed. They've got some guys that can work. And as the season goes on, you would think that that'll gel and eventually it'll it'll come together. Here they go on fourth down. Rhodes is going to roll out to the right. The clock will expire as this is the last play of the game, and he will slide down, and that is the ball game. And your final score here tonight in the opener, Kerrville-Tivy 21, 
Medina Valley 7. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we will continue in a moment. It's It's the the biggest biggest sale of the year at North Park Chevrolet in Castroville. Get a new Silverado Crew Cab posted at $37,999. Or get $5,000 off Equinox or $7,000 off Traverse. 1.9% financing available on new Chevrolets. Plus, get two years of no-charge oil changes and one year of unlimited car washes with all new Chevrolets. Find new roads at North Park Chevrolet. 10 minutes outside Loop 410 in Castroville or at npchevy.com. Dotson House Moving and Construction is a fourth generation company operated by the same family for over 75 years. We do turnkey work from moving your structure, setting the foundation, and all your construction needs. Aluminum decking, concrete work, canopies, and any other need to make your project operational. From moving to construction, large or small, Dotson House Moving and Construction does it all. Located at 12939 Southwest Loop 410 in San Antonio. Give us a call at 210-628-1459. Medina Healthcare System provides local residents with quality healthcare resources close to home without having to drive to San Antonio for their healthcare needs. Medina Healthcare System has stellar family practice physicians, a full-time OBGYN, a full-time surgeon, and very qualified nurse practitioners and physician assistants. Locations include Hondo, Divine, and Castroville. Visit medinahospital.net for more information. Medina Healthcare System, providing quality care close to home. South Texas Hardware has been serving the Medina Valley area since 1987. South Texas Hardware is a hardware store that thrives on the interaction between the business and its customers. From home maintenance to expert advice, South Texas Hardware can serve your needs. South Texas Hardware supports the Medina Valley and surrounding communities. Stop by and see what South Texas Hardware has to offer. South Texas Hardware, Highway 90 West in beautiful Castroville, Texas. Texas, 268,000 square miles and then some. Twice as much elbow room as California. There's just no place like Texas. You can take that to the bank. Texan Bank, poised and ready for a future that's wide open. Member FDIC. Welcome back here to Panther Stadium. Final score tonight: Medina Valley twenty-one or Medina Valley seven, Kerrville Tyvee twenty-one. Um, this was kind of a little bit of a tale of two halves, if you will. Um, Medina Valley turned that ball over four times in the first half: two interceptions, a muff punt, and actually I think it was three interceptions in a muff punt. And then uh, Kerrville scored three times off of those turnovers, made it twenty-one to nothing at halftime. Panthers played a lot better in the second half, seven to nothing. They they outscored them seven to nothing in the second half. Kerrville did not mail it in by any means. Now they kind of play not to lose in that fourth quarter. Right. And Medina Valley had opportunity with the football, and you know, kind of some weird play calling. No urgency. They're trying to run the ball with you know down by two scores and time left for them to score, but. Running the football eats the clock. They didn't get any yards. They ended up going three and out and having to punt. And no sense of urgency there. And that kind of bothered me a little bit. But it is the first game of the year. And, you know, next week you got John Jay at John Jay. And from what we've heard, John Jay is a pretty good football team. And Medina Valley did clean up some of those penalties in the second half. They played a much cleaner ball game. They're going to have to play a cleaner ball game against John Jay. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think you'll see that. I think you'll only see improvement every week. And, and, you know, as he said, we carried some momentum after this ball game, after the performance in the second half. So that's something positive you can carry in the next week. Yeah, and, I mean, it's the first game of the year. Your offense sometimes does sputter in the first couple of weeks of the, of the season, trying to get them up to speed. And – 
honestly, if you hit Carter Hewitt on some of those open routes, the Panthers probably have 28 points on the board yeah. right there. I mean, he was open. They had the opportunity to make the plays. You have some young quarterbacks that don't have a lot of playing experience in there. Didn't hit those passes, but as the season goes on, they'll probably get more comfortable, and you'll start seeing him hit some of those passes. And and I know he's probably one of your most electrifying men out there in Corey Hewitt, but you just can't look one way all right. the time. Right. You have to get some other guys in but the ball game and, and take some pressure off of him also and maybe ease the coverage on him a little bit. Also. Yeah, you're going to have to because you, you can't just rely on Guerrero and him. You're going to have to have other guys step up, whether it's Reza. He's got some speed. He's a, he's an athlete. He can move around. We've seen um, him work out of the backfield and catch some passes on swing passes yep. and get him out in some space. And they're going to have to use Galleon's size advantage in, in some areas to try to get him a height advantage, throw the ball up, and let him make the play. Well, you have and, all, all of your receivers are tall. Yeah. Mills no, is tall. Han is tall. Yep. The young man who made the good catch there towards the end so, of the ball game. Yeah. So, I mean – Use their matchups too. Yep, and you know, and I think as the season will. goes on, you're going to see that oh, because absolutely. you only have one more game, and then there's district play. So yep. I mean, district's right around the corner in two weeks. Um, unfortunately, it's a 21 to seven loss. Probably not how Coach Britt wanted to start his tenure at Medina Valley, but it wasn't a horrible game. It was a sloppy game in the first half, and it was kind of hard to watch that. But they did clean it up, and it was better in the second half, and you got to build off of that. Yep. We're going to take a break and then come back to wrap things up. You're listening to Panther Football, and we will continue in a moment. Bush's Chicken, one of the oldest locations in Castroville, is proud to serve the Medina Valley area. Bush's Chicken has one goal, be the best. Bush's Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve. Stop by Bush's Chicken on Tuesday and get the Tinder Tuesday deal, or try their buffalo fries and ask about their Panther special. It's always a hit. Bush's Chicken, 935 Highway 90 East in Castroville. Call them at 830-538-2800. Minimum balance required. And earn up to 5.37%. A 5.37 APY. Stop in today. We look forward to you joining our CSB family. Are you ready for a vacation? Tanya with Travel by Design can help you with all your vacation destination needs. At no cost to you, she can plan all of the details tailored to your unique wants and needs. So all you have to do is enjoy your vacation. Tanya is a certified expert with Disney Universal Orlando and California, Sandals, and all cruise lines. Give Tanya a call at 830-931-4834 or visit her Facebook page, Tanya with Travel by Design, for all the latest specials and must-do vacations. It's the biggest sale of the year at North Park Chevrolet in Castroville. Get a new Silverado Crew Cab posted at $37,999 or get $5,000 off Equinox or $7,000 off Traverse. 1.9% financing available on new Chevrolets. Plus get two years of no charge oil changes and one year of unlimited car washes with all new Chevrolets. Find new roads at North Park Chevrolet, 10 minutes outside Loop 410 in Castroville or at npchevy.com. Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. Dotson House Moving and Construction is a fourth generation company operated by the same family for over 75 years. We do turnkey work from moving your structure, setting the foundation, and all your construction needs. Aluminum decking, concrete work, canopies, and any other need to make your project operational. From moving to construction, large or small, Dotson House Moving and Construction does it all. Located at 12939 Southwest Loop 410 in San Antonio. Give us a call at 210-628-1459.
Welcome back here to Panther Stadium as Medina Valley falls to Kerrville Tyvee on opening night. 21-7, your final score. And like Mari and I talked about before the break, there are some positive things to take from this second half, especially you did outscore them 7 to nothing, and you played better. You didn't play as sloppy. You cleaned some of it up. And there's going to be a big adjustment going into John Jay, but now they have something to gauge off of how they did. We'll hopefully talk to Coach Britt on Sports for Supper on Wednesday night and uh, meet him and, and get him on there talking about, you know, this game, but more about the season coming up and what he foresees for the future of Medina Valley football here as we go through this season and, you know, into the next few because he's going to get at least, probably at least three years here to try to turn this program around. And, you know, you did see an adjustment in the second half here tonight, and that's something that we have failed to see some in the few of the years past. And so that's that's a positive sight to see, and hopefully they can build off of that. I do want to thank the sponsors, as always, to make it possible to bring you these broadcasts here on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Um, our title sponsors, North Park Chevrolet and Dotson House Moving and Construction. Thank you guys for um, being in there to sponsor these broadcasts, but thank all of y'all for making it possible to bring you these because without y'all, we wouldn't be able to bring you all the broadcasts we do. Uh, one more time, good luck to the cross country tomorrow as they have their meet here at Medina Valley. Um, I think they start a community run at 7 o'clock, and then about 7.30 they're going to start getting everyone off onto the course, the varsity girls, and then so on and so forth. And I know the other night they said they had about 16 run, 1,600 runners yeah. registered for that race at the time. So you can come out here and support the Panthers here at Medina Valley in the cross-country meet. Um, also want to remind everybody that Wednesday night will be at Sports for Supper. That's a 6.30 start for that uh, show there. Live at Sammy's, you can come out there to Sammy's, grab dinner. You know, you can listen to the show there. You can listen to it on YouTube. And also want to remind everybody that uh, next week the football game is at John Jay in San Antonio. That's right there off of Marbach Road, um, right there by Marbach, the stadium right there, the Northside Stadium. Um, I can't remember the name of it at the moment. Comalander, maybe. Yeah. No. That's not Comalander, but I can't remember. Gustafson, maybe. Where is it at? Right there off Marbach, that north side stadium right there, where John, right by John Jay High School. I think that's Gustafson, right there on 410. Yeah, it's, it, I know it's Paul Taylor Fieldhouse uh, in basketball. But, yeah, but it's not. But it, I don't know what the I football think it's field Gustafson. is called. I think it's Gustafson Stadium. But nonetheless, it's, it's at John Jay, and uh, first away game. Anyone who goes, you're going to have to buy tickets online through John Jay. You can't right. do it through Medina Valley. That's what uh, the athletic director, Coach Bull, was telling us the other night at the show. Everything's digital. Everything's digital now, so you'll have to buy your tickets that way. Um, and that is a 7 o'clock start. We'll be on the air around 640. Um, and, and we promise we'll get Marcus to, to talk a little bit yeah. more. He's kind of... Well, he's microphone shy a well, little bit. Well, and this is only his second broadcast with us, his first one in a game, and he's going to be doing volleyball later on. I think they're going to start that in September. But uh, they'll be doing volleyball, and, uh, yeah, looking he'll get Looking forward to hearing looking him get, forward, on, yep. get his feet wet. And um, also a shout uh, to, to Dwayne, who used to do these games with us. We, we got the Top Cats on for you. He was always on us to get yep. him on because his daughter's in him. Yep. So we, we did get him on, and if he's listening, hopefully you hear that. But, uh, no, we're looking forward to the season coming up. 21-7, to the Panthers 0-1, but you got another game before district, and there's some positives to take from this. Absolutely. So for uh, Medina Valley Broadcast Network, and for Maury Stein and Marcus Fuentes, I'm Jared Lucky saying good night, God bless, and we will see you next time when Panther football continues.